once again uh, good morning to you all i'm uh, veteran wing commander jay kumar founder director of uh, british bharat council for promotion of innovation research and uh, entrepreneurship and also founder of enroot group of uh, companies and then uh, i'm privileged and thankful uh, to the vice chancellor and the management of uh, periyar manima university uh, to give an opportunity to conduct this seminar here and uh, also for uh, special mention to uh, you know thank the ceo of uh, periyar cbi who has coordinated in the shortest possible time and uh, and thanks for all the uh, industrial uh, representatives government officials and uh, senior uh, military officials who have spared their valuable time and also the uh, people at the army headquarters the air force and navy also uh, who have joined us um, uh, due to some unforeseen commitments uh, there had to be a delay apologies for that uh, now uh, without uh, wasting much uh, time i would like to once again welcome you all and then uh, take down the few slides where uh, i would like to share what is bridge bharat all about and what we are doing and then what's the way forward and then that will uh, set the uh, pitch for today's uh, discussion uh, which will be in the format of you uh, know headquarters the defense forces sharing their requirements and their procedures and then subsequently we will have a panel discussion uh, where all three stakeholders major stakeholders academia industry and the defense shall uh, talk in on the subject matter which is collaborative r&d and uh, cooperative production because what that is the way forward for uh, success in not only in defense in any field of uh, technology or anything even in agriculture you can implement so that's a concept we have taken we all are individually good but then are we good collectively so that's what the uh, test of time which we have to pass uh, so this is the uh, topic all three services everybody involved and uh, next the schedule already you are aware which is in front of you two sessions and next is uh, now we'll go what is bridge bharat who we are bridgeward council as the name suggests we are bridging bharat in terms of technology knowledge and the uh, skills uh, because we all as i said uh, academia is uh, doing wonderful job in training the people educating them and also uh, the industries are doing wonderful job developing technologies and products which are of world class but when it comes uh, uh, you know to synergy uh, we are lacking somewhere so uh, that is uh, where the gap is uh, like for defense we make products we send it abroad israel america so many places we send softwares and uh, even components but uh, we are not able to develop our own systems in totality uh, because there is there are some gaps where we are not able to communicate or overcome those barriers so that is uh, why the concept of bridge bharat came in where uh, we uh, are working in you uh, know a tandem or an alongside with all these uh, stakeholders academia industry and defense and defense which includes the government policy makers also the government policies are so good these days you must have seen licenses are out and a lot of uh, 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 things new policies are coming but still we are not able to succeed so how do we uh, bridge the gap to make it successful that's what all about like even uh, to just to expand uh, the bridge it's an acronym which stands for binding uh, researchers innovation innovators institutions industries defense government and entrepreneurs this is what the uh, full form of bridge that's how the word was coined so uh, literally we are touching all the people all the stakeholders in this uh, domain uh, to understand their problems to understand their potentials and thereafter connecting and conveying the same to others that's what we are doing uh, here what i said the dbscs and all all the people are uh, connected to this individually in uh, uh, silos we have been working so that we are bridging and uh, then uh, what we uh, do here is uh, about 30 institutions as on date 30 institutions including periyar manima university and nearby universities sandeep university nasik 
we are working with them, with the students and the uh, faculty members uh, to find the solution for various problem statements of not only defense, agriculture also and any other department. And also uh, we are in touch uh, through MOU with uh, thousands of uh, MSMUs like uh, the stalwarts of industrial association, and chair president is here, BCAC chairman, all. So through them we are connected to the uh, MSMEs and uh, we have personally interacted with uh, more than 300 uh, MSMEs to know their capabilities, their problems. So that's how we understand where we are and what we can do. So we are confident that we will be able to uh, handle the people at the grassroots level and then take them to the mainstream. That is what uh, we are thinking at. Then uh, what we can, uh, these are the associates, you can see it's only a portion of it just to show. And uh, the next slide what you are seeing is the uh, people who are the core team, uh, like uh, uh, Armada, Automation, BCIC, and we have the Career CBI who guide us with the startup develop and how the startup or entrepreneur has to do. And then uh, Tansia at uh, policy level, they guide us. And the DGCA facilitates himself, will be signing MI with sir also. He has been doing uh, you know wonders uh, in Tamil Nadu corridor as of now. And uh, then uh, Greenfield projects, what we have done. This I am touching upon specifically uh, because uh, when I say uh, we, it is not Bridgeworth, it is not in route. It's a conglomeration of about 43 startups and uh, the 30 institutes and plus supporting of other 300 MSMEs. That is Bridge Bharat. So when we do a project, it is not one company which is there or it's not me or anybody. It's a group of people. More than uh, 300, 400 people are working on this. Their mind, hard work, skill, and the students, professors, everybody is involved. At a small level, at uh, you know, sitting in Tanjavur or Trichy, we are able to do it. So people who have come from Chennai and other places, you all know you have uh, so much of potential. So our uh, earnest request is that work together and you can do wonders. So this is what you are seeing is uh, automation of a firing range. Most of us may not be familiar with this, but this is where the uh, tanks of the army, uh, Arjun tank and P90, A72, P90 and all their testers, that has been done with the help of some colleges and the MSME. The next one what you see is at Jabalpur, similar work we have done. And thereafter, uh, one thing uh, what we have done, the next project is, next. It's all part of the same activity. The this is one which I'll leave it to uh, Dr. Uh, Arna uh, to talk later. This is the pride of Periyar University, if I may say so, with the permission of Vice Chancellor. This particular project, I could do it as a designer. Uh, the professors uh, is sitting in the front row, also one of them, and uh, I was privileged uh, to work with them all, and I learned a lot, and the Air Force and the country gained a lot. So that's one of the reasons why I. Uh, you know, requested the VC in a shorter notice that we must have this meeting here so that people know the potential is tier 2, tier 3 colleges also available. Only thing they need a stand. So this uh, particular project uh, which was uh, uh, not concluding for uh, almost a decade was done within uh, less than uh, uh, one year. That's about 44 weeks from design to development and induction. And the cost saving is into thousands of crores. So that's a uh, record uh, the contribution of the university. Uh, so that's where we are. So this is one of the uh, example where we have worked as a team, six MSMEs and uh, the CBI university all put together. And besides this, uh, some little achievements within the short span of time, what we have done, uh, this all recognitions done, uh, given none other than uh, Prime Minister of India, the poems project of uh, Periyar Manim University has appreciated. And uh, I personally, as a designer, got the project management uh, leadership. And for the automation, the DG himself from DGQA has given appreciation. And besides that, uh, we have got uh, the runner-up award for uh, the SADM Champion Award to a runner-up in 2020. So my uh, director, R&D, Mr. Amrita Kanesh, is director of Armada, his own company is there. He was also awarded for the great ideas uh, by uh, Chinnasamy uh, Association, the award. And uh, then one more company, this is recent, uh, uh, April 2022, there was, all must have seen IDEX, uh, India Defense Challenge, where uh, the people give ideas for the challenges of the defense and various departments. So Arthral, uh, Bala Arthral uh, Solutions, that's one of our uh, associate company who are part of this Nessel Simulator as well. They developed two solutions, one for Army, one for Air Force. Both have been selected and they got price of 1.5 crore each. They are in a uh, Chennai-based company. 
they also have all young people working for them. This is academia should think for it. The people are fed from the academia only. That's an opportunity. So uh, then uh, this is how, like one seminar we have been conducting every year. Then uh, also we have mentors at all levels. Uh, Dr. Sudha Nikolai, uh, then uh, serving scientists, uh, senior generals, air marshals, they are all advising us. And uh, uh, then we have uh, the next, see MOU. See MOU, like in universities and all, you know normally industries, it's uh, very rare. This is the instrument which gives us the access uh, to the knowledge storehouse as well as the industries to uh, do something new for the university. So this is what we are, uh, the route we have followed and it has been successful. And today also we will do the same. And then uh, coming to the Defense Expo, last uh, week, 26th to 28th we had in Chennai. There also we did some experiment having about 20 MSMEs under a single umbrella uh, to demonstrate their capabilities. It was a great success. This seminar is fallout of that. We were encouraged to, to proceed further. So it's possible we have a uh, will and we can find a way. And now, uh, just to uh, no, sum it up as Bridge uh, uh, what we can do, uh, we have all senior officers and uh, experts available. Procedure, the main thing is knowledge is not there. We will be able to, all this in single word, I can say, we can guide you. Nothing else beyond that. Then you have to survive on your own. Next one. And, uh, Expertise, since we have picked up the people who have got expertise, proven uh, records, they are available already. Anybody starting a company, they can take their help straight away. This is what already we have been doing. I have reiterated, nothing new. So we can work together and uh, do a wonderful job. That's it. Next. Next. That's it, way forward. I will leave to the experts and uh, the uh, eminent people out here uh, to guide us and to tell us where we stand. With this, once again, I welcome you all uh, to this uh, session. And uh, at the end of this session, we hope uh, to find a way forward and to make this effort grow into a bigger uh, movement and then the country grow stronger. Thank you very much. May I request uh, General Ramesh to share his view, sir. Good morning, everybody. I also would like to apologize on behalf of the organizers for the inordinate delay that has happened and particularly thankful to the Vice Chancellor for uh, accommodating the delay. Uh, respected uh, Vice Chancellor of Periyar Maniyama University, Dr. Veluswamy, Mr. Mariyappan, the President of uh, Tamil Nadu Small and Tiny Industries Association, Mr. Rajapa Rajkumar, Chairman of DCIC Trichy, reps of the Directorate of Indigenization who are on uh, virtual mode connected with us, that is from the Ali side, Commodore Balasundaram of Navy, who is on online again from Coimbatore. Dr. Varadarajan from the Quality Control Establishment. Wing Commander Jay Kumar, who gave the speech just now. Colonel Selva Kumar, who was responsible for getting me here. And uh, Mrs. Deepa Jay Kumar, if she is around here. Uh, reps of industry, learned academia, who are there sitting in front. And uh, I hope there are some students here. I am told that they will be joining slightly later who are the budding uh, researchers and who are the potential entrepreneurs of the future. Firstly, my compliments to Brit Bharat for uh, this kind of an initiative. Uh, frankly, this is something which has been lacking in our country for a very long time. And uh, there is a gap between the industry, academia, and the defense as an organization. So the three of them need to sit on a common table, collaborate, wherein all the stakeholders are brought on board. This is one of the reasons why the Western world were able to succeed in uh, advanced weapon system. If you take the US or any of the European countries, the primary reason is the collaboration between these three pillars, that is the industry, academia, and of course the user or the armed forces on one side. This gap had been correctly identified by Brit Bharat, and they made a very small, but I would say it's a very significant beginning. Uh, 
those of us who have been uh, following uh, worldwide trends, uh, we would all be aware of the atom bomb project of World War II, which was uh, essentially, which was the reason why the World War II came to an end. That is when the two cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed. The project was called the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project involved collaborations among hundreds of agencies, which include academic people, which include industry, which include the military, and a whole lot of government representatives also. The success of that project is there for all of us to see, because that also sowed the seeds for nuclear power. That is the small beginning which has led to huge results. So this small beginning of Brit Bharat, I am sure, will see big results in times to come. Over the last eight years, the government has been particularly doing a lot of initiatives towards Atmanubhata. We've been hearing this term. In simple terms, it is self-reliance, and particularly self-reliance in defense. A lot of initiatives have been put in place over the last eight years, I would say. That is since 2014-15. Some of the initiatives were listed out by uh, Wing Commander Jayakumar already. A few of them are, first is, giving its extraordinary importance to the MAKE procedure. Those of us who are conversant with the capital acquisition of uh, army, it's a very complex thing, nevertheless, uh, to make it simple. The MAKE procedure has been given enormous amount of importance, and that is what is going to give pri be given priority. Second thing, uh, in the defense budget of 2022-23, two significant announcements were made. One is 68% of all capital procurement will be bought from Indian vendors which comes to translates around 1.24 lakh crore rupees, 1.24 lakh crores. And approximately 25% of the defense R&D budget will be towards the private sector, which is translating to around 53,000 crores. Now, why I'm telling you these two figures is the kind of opportunity that exists for all of you, particularly the industry, and for the industry to succeed, the Ideas have to come from the academia. So this is the opportunity at stake for you people, and it is only going to increase in the years to come, wherein the government has realized that self-reliance in defense manufacturing is the way to go. They have also started some other initiatives, such as Technology Development Fund, and the DRDO has been told to share its facilities of around 130 establishments and 25 ranges to be thrown open to the industry for their testing, trial, and other purposes. But one thing which is uh, very essential, the way I look at it, having been in the Army for around 36 years, is that we need to have a lot of patience. This is not something where you can get results quickly, because capital acquisition typically is for a weapon system or a platform, which is to stay in service for the next three, or sometimes four, or maybe even five decades. I can give you two examples off the cuff. The course, which was inducted in 1986, is still in service. P-72s, which came in 1979, are still in service, and possibly will still be in service for the next five years or ten years also. Now, why I'm telling these two is uh, to link it with uh, Wing Commander Jayakumar's uh, mention about the Trichy CBIC initiative, wherein they made a visit to Chennai to MBT Arjun, and they are looking at manufacturing certain components and parts for MBT Arjun. I only want to request you people to look at the other family of weapon systems also, because the population is large, they are likely to be in service for a very long duration, and indigenization is one thing where there is immense scope. So there is a lot of scope and opportunity for you people. It is just that uh, the opportunity has to be identified, and of course you need to work with the right people to get things done. I would also want to close by telling that there are four C's which I personally feel are important. First is, you have to be competitive, because if you are not competitive, somebody else will simply overtake you and get the piece of cake and the business. You need to build the capacity. Yes, you have to make a small beginning, but eventually you should have the ability to scale up as the requirement or the demands keep increasing. Cost effectiveness is extremely important, because you are spending the nation's money. I would put it the taxpayer's money. You are paying, ta paying tax, I am paying tax. It is this tax money which eventually gets spent in the defense budget. So the government is going to look for bang for the buck for every rupee that is spent. So you have to be cost effective. And the last is conformance to quality. Because there are no runners up in war, you can have only winners. So you have to give the best of the weapon system to the soldier. 
we try to get the best of the weapon system for the soldier quality has to be topmost so many of very very often you find uh, vendors getting frustrated when their product do not pass the muster of trial or testing by the user and often tend to blame the user to say that they're being extremely strict and you know they're rejecting the component or the assembly or a product for some frivolous or flimsy reason but that's not true you have to understand that the products that you people are delivering have to help deliver results in war if you are suffering a small little component for mbt arjun or t72 irrespective of how small insignificant it might be it can result in that equipment not being available for operation so please keep that in mind conformance to quality specification is something there can be no compromise i am sure with the kind of capability that uh, we as a state have i mean i belong to tamil nadu too tamil nadu has a unique advantage of you know the, there is a term we were called as the detroit you have the automobile cluster in uh, chennai where some of the biggest manufacturers are there we have coimbatore which used to be nicknamed as the manchester of india again we have a cluster in uh, tiruchirappalli with bharat heavy electrical and a whole lot of other industries including the huge rail workshop so the capability is there possibly what is lacking in my understanding is the awareness and particularly awareness about the opportunities that exist this is true for the industry and this is equally true for the academia also where the academia can actually contribute is with their uh, deep knowledge of the subject and particularly keeping uh, pace with the trends that are happening globally they can handhold with the industry and make things happen last you know the motto of uh, periyar maniyamma institute of science and technology is think innovate and transform i would say that is very apt for this gathering as of today the academic fraternity coupled with the students should think come up with innovative ideas and then hand hold with the industry to transform so that we become a self reliant nation when it comes to defense thank you very much for giving me this opportunity thank you very much sir for a uh, kind words and the enlightening lecture uh, morning ladies and gentlemen uh, continuing with the session uh, firstly thanks uh, to the, uh, the uh, general uh, uh, <coughs> ramesh for the in a very informative talk uh, now we have uh, like as uh, general R ramesh uh, mentioned about 1.24 lakhs has been kept for capital procurement reserves for indian industries the emphasis today is that we are trying to do is uh, there is another hidden treasure within defense that is uh, out of the total budget allo allocated two third is uh, given to sustaining the uh, equipment held as you also mentioned we have a lot of uh, tanks the uh, guns uh, and other equipment which we are holding since uh, ages about uh, 30 to 50 years old and these equipment are to be sustained through Uh, indigenous solutions now uh, of late maybe some of you would have heard about uh, import ban there is a positive list of indigenous in that have been brought up wherein the imports have been banned so this uh, here we have about two third of the amount that is about uh, roughly about 2 uh, 2.5 lakh crores which are available the agencies that we have called today uh, we have a live session from the uh, officials uh from the military we have one session by uh directorate of indigenization who does indigenization for the army and we have uh, one session from uh, center of uh, indigenization and uh, self reliance from uh, of navy and we have the uh, uh we have the base repair depots of air force so effectively we are going to cover all three services and the amount of opportunities that are there and whom to contact and what are the procedures so this is a very valuable information straight from the horse's mouth wherein uh, we will be able to uh, learn a lot uh, <coughs> first uh, let me invite uh, colonel gadge Colonel Danish Prakash Gadge. Uh, he is currently serving in Directorate of Indigenization for Army, posted at uh, Delhi. 
He has got about 25 years of experience in uh, core of electronics and mechanical engineers. He is uh, looking at uh, uh, after the indigenization cell of uh, weapons. He is an expert in aerospace. He has uh, done MTech uh, from IIT uh, Kharagpur. He is uh, trained on maintenance of all the uh, helicopters that are uh, used in the army like Chetak, Cheetah and uh, as well as the Heron EAVs. So he has also been an instructor at faculty of uh, aeronautical engineering at military college of uh, EME at Secunderabad. He is uh, also commanded a station of shop in western sector and uh, uh, EME battalion in northeast sector. So he is currently involved in indigenizing all the spare parts and other uh, uh, assemblies of the weapon system that to include the armament portion of all the tanks as well as the uh, guns like field guns and buffers. So we, would, we are eager to uh, listen to him. Over to him. Uh, good morning, everybody. Sir, is the presentation shared, sir? I am Colonel Dhanesh Khatge, and on behalf of Brigadier Chandrasekhar, Brig Indigenization, Directorate of Indigenization, I thank the Bharat Bridge Council and TMIST for giving us this opportunity to give a small brief on the indigenization by army. To be covering my brief, as given first the charter, what are the measures that we have taken to facilitate industry so that they can actively participate in indigenization and the various routes which are available with us, which we undertake for the development of the indigenous assemblies. Before we go ahead to the charter of the indigenization, there are various indigenization agencies, uh, the Army Design Bureau, Directorate of Indigenization and Army Base Workshop. While the Army Design Bureau uh, critically looks at the indigenization requirements from the perspective of the capital procurements, cap capability development, the new oblique niche technologies, and while Army Base Workshop only looks at the minor spares and the uh, consumables required uh, for the their production requirement of the yearly production requirement, the Directorate of Indigenization is responsible for indigenization of all the ex-import uh, spares, sub-assemblies, assemblies which are required for sustenance of the ex-import existing weapon system of the equipment. We are catering for all the ex-import equipments of the Indian Army, right from the guns, which has Bofors, 130mm M46 field guns, Smirch, Grad BM, or the tanks T-72, T-90, even the import content of the Arjun. And apart from this, if there is any product upgrade, so all these requirements which are there, the uh, spares, oblique the sub-assemblies, oblique the major assemblies, they are generally procured through the revenue route. And the important facet which is there is that since it's the initial development, so it is understandable that the uh, firm which is undertaking the development will invest uh, a substantial amount of money into the uh, R&D, research and development. And therefore, the whatever the additional development cost is required, other than the cost which is required to only manufacture the item, that additional development cost is paid to the firm who is actually successful in giving the indigenous uh, component to the Indian Army. The technical support is also given by drawing and specification wings and the Air Army base workshops so that the firm which is undertaking the development, they can be given the complete technical know-how of the item which is required to be developed. So in short, uh, the Directorate of Indigenization is looking at indigenization of individual components and spare parts. Now the components can be individually spares or they can be a major assembly. A major assembly can consist of a uh, hundred smaller spares, hundred small items or so-called child parts. 
So it can be indigenization of major items. It can be indigenization of individual small spares, or it can be indigenization of platform-based indigenization, which means the entire spares required for the particular weapon system. Uh, I will just explain with a small example here that for 130 mm M46 field gun, when we say that we need a particular spare, a bridge block, say a small spare is required for the bridge block assembly. So that will be indigenization of individual component of the spare. Now, since all these smaller spares were not uh, forming the economic order quantities, or they were required in smaller quantities, or if they are required in major quantities, we can take up with smaller spares. So what we did is we went into the indigenization of major assemblies. So we are now indigenizing the entire, say, uh, equilibrator assembly of the 130mm and 46 field gun, or the buffer as uh, the buffer assembly so the entire assembly can be indigenized which is a major assembly it contains a lot of sub parts child parts the quantity initial quantity will be a development quantity which is a smaller quantity but with a with a uh, indicative requirement that is a promise that if it is successfully developed the future requirement which is likely to be a particular quantity will be taken up from the successful vendor. And the platform-based indigenization means that if there is a particular weapon system, the entire requirement of that particular weapon system, they have been put in a single package, and we call it a package-based indigenization. And the entire requirement has to be uh, developed and uh, given by the part one particular firm. We also Apart from the X import content of the, uh, the complete weapon system, oblique the equipment. If there are any uh, assemblies, sub assemblies, or spares which presently are being supplied by the defense PSUs, but they are not forthcoming from defense PSUs because of lack of capacity, those also we undertake for. Uh, developing the second source or the vendor base or widening the vendor base. In addition to these, there are some product upgrades. Uh, for example, for the tanks uh, or the uh, ARV VT72, there are some engine upgrades that we are presently undertaking. So the current engine may be uh, 365 horsepower. We are going with 400 horsepower, 450 horsepower. So. This is the basic charter of the Directorate of Indigenization RP. Now, what are the salient aspects of indigenization? Now, since uh, these are the sustenance requirement which are required for the entire field army sustenance, depending upon their uh, maintenance requirement, the quantities required may be initially small. So, what we have done is with the uh, the depots who are procuring it. We are clubbing the requirement for three to five years. Make it a, a handsome quantity to make it an economic order quantity so that it is economically feasible for the firm who's participating for the indigenization process. And they are being able to uh, undertake the uh, development in an economic manner. Whatever uh, we are taking uh, the bidding process which is there, whatever route of development may be there, it may be a through RFP route or maybe through EOI route. Every process is done through defense procurement portal. So if you go on defense procurement portal and search for the RFPs of DOI, on the search menu, if you say DOI, you will find the RFPs there on the defense procurement portal. So the bidding is transparent on online portal and uh, the complete database which is there for the uh, financial bidding which is there for the comparative statements or the order which is placed it's on the details for procurement portal which is for the past orders also for everybody to see we have got simplified procedures as compared to other indigenization agencies and uh, the enhanced financial powers actually help us take the procedures faster right from say hosting of rfp to giving a supply order and then further development the, the procedure becomes faster because of the enhanced financial power within the organization. Now, uh, there's something called declaring free flow. Now, the once the item has been successfully developed,
sorry there was a break in the meeting because of the time schedule i will just rejoin now uh, was the firm who is undertaking a development it develops a particular item initially the pilot samples are evaluated test evaluated and the uh, evaluation is rigorous because if the item pertains to gun uh, it it is actually dealing with the uh, life of a individual and therefore uh, the item has to pass all the test parameters including the firing trials if required and uh, then thereafter the firm is given clearance to manufacture the bulk so initially the firm is only manufacturing the pilot samples maybe two or three in quantity and then once they confirm the pilot sample has been technically evaluated and passed then they are asked to give a bulk supplies once the bulk supply has been successfully trial evaluated the firm payment is made clear the payment is clear however the all the documents which firm has submitted along with the pilot sample are submitted to dgqa for codification so dgqa with directorate of standardization go in for codification wherein they allot a nsn number nato stock number for the particular item which has been developed by the firm against the firm so what happens is your now item which has been developed by a particular firm has been declared free flow by the directorate of indigenization post codification and thereafter you are the particular firm who has developed this item is so smart by the depots for, for future procurement so this is a uh, very good proposal uh, the provision which is there for the firms wherein they are assured future supplies uh, the registration with dgqa is not mandatory for doi development it can be done post successful development also and which is just a step which is a, a procedure which is been uh, the way has been given so that the wider firm base participate in the indigenization activities and uh, indigenization of items which have been ex import irrespective of who is the procuring agency it may be dpsus also that is being taken by doi and the once the firm has been successfully declared as source marked for the particular item the first subsequent procurement will be on lt on that firm or ot whatever the open tender inquiry uh, sorry the single tender inquiry or the limited tender inquiry on the firms who have actually successfully taken thereafter it will go to open tender inquiry what are the measures that have been given in the the dpm chapter 15 and uh, with the doi so that we can facilitate the industry that registration with doi oblique dgqa initially is not mandatory any firm any firm can participate the firms who are registered with dgqa nsic we don't seek any of their documents in tec the firms who are not at all registered with any government agencies they have to submit few documents to justify their capacity emd is not required if you are registered with any government agency so earnest money deposit is not required for the submission of rfps the pre bid meets which are there they are conducted at the equipment location so if i am hosting a item to be indigenized which pertains to a bofors gun system a pre bid meet will be conducted at base workshop in jabalpur or at uh, the drawing and specification wing in jabalpur wherein the bofors gun will be there the item will be displayed the item will be shown to them and all related queries regarding that particular item can be solved by the technical experts at jabalpur the provision of development cost the cost which is required for initial development say manufacture of the mold manufacture of the uh, initial test fixtures and jigs all these are part of development cost so the firm can claim the development cost and that cost will be given the availability of drawings samples and the complete technical know how is shared free of cost to the prospective vendors 
at the time of pre bid meet and once the uh, supply order is placed on the l1 vendor they are given given se separately to the l1 vendor also and of course like various seminars and interaction and coupon displays are there we give the enhanced awareness to indian manufacturer like i am doing right now finally uh, what are the various routes that we undertake for development the first route is the standard rfp route wherein whenever we confirm with the requirement of the item we host the item along with its drawing and request for proposal on the defense procurement portal generally 6 weeks time is given to respond for the rfp and generally 3 weeks after 3 weeks of hosting the rfp there is a pre bid meet at the equipment location which is one of the base workshops now after this rfp route which is there after the bids have been evaluated whoever is the l1 vendor he only gets the supply order and the l1 vendor has to then submit the pilot sample clear the pilot sample submit the bulk and that's how is basically the item is inspection note will be cleared the l1 vendor is the l1 cost is assessed based on the complete package cost it is not assessed only on the basic cost it is assessed on the complete package cost that is development cost as well as the part cost so whoever is giving the complete package as the lowest package will get the l1 now this rfp route is generally catering for eoq or 3 to 5 years of requirement and as i have mentioned post codification the firm is the depot will compulsorily buy the first procurement from the firm 80% or 50% of the firm as per the dpm now the second route that we undertake for indigenization is the industry funded route with commitment clause when we interact with various industries we come to know that a particular industry has got some uh, expertise or we are hosting eois where is there is no response for rfps expression of interest where we give out that this is our major requirement of indigenization and the development is industry funded so there will be no development cost which will be paid for this there is no part cost which will be paid for the particular sample which is being developed so industry is basically developing only one or two pilot samples and perhaps such industries who are expert who are who does have expertise in particular domain they come forward with their equipment because they know the investment may not be uh, more for those particular firms and once the item is successfully developed the owners of undertaking test and trials is with doi we help you with all the test and trials which is required if there are filing trials required we take a prior sanction before giving expression of interest so that we can undertake filing trials for that particular item and once it is successfully developed uh, cleared all the trials are cleared the functional tests are cleared then the firm is earmarked as a source and the bulk procurement by the ordnance will be taken from the firm this is the second route wherein the development has to be undertaken by the firm itself the third route is suomoto route that industry submits their own proposal there are many industries who have actually uh, have got a technology or they have gone into a technology development and prepared some products say there are ti sites which are there so there are firms who are capable of manufacturing or fabricating ti sites in house so they submit a proposal that i have a capability and i can be of help to army so whatever they developed as per the specification that is required by the army we help them with all the test and trials and the development is industry funded route the suomoto route is that once the development is completed since so the industry has come on suomoto the commitment clause which is there is subject to the requirement by indian army that is being firstly undertaken and checked so that commitment clause will be generally checked beforehand before asking the industry to go ahead with it 
so the roughly the what the development cycle looks like is once we have identified the item the generation of drawings quality assurance instructions and specification is undertaken at drawing and specification wings yes and uh, the firms are identified and we are framing the rfps benchmark technical evaluation and cnc conclusion of contract and post contract this is a standard rfp cycle which is there and it is governed by chapter 15 of defense procurement manual 2009 which is available on the internet you can go through this so what we are actually looking at industry is that the industry should whatever expertise they have in whatever domain they should look at the rfps and uis which are hosted by dui and come forward uh, we are available on dui con contacts dui dash army at the nic dot net is the email id standard email id you can write to us email us uh, i will will share our uh, contact numbers through uh, the defense council also bharat bridge council also but the industries respond to the uh, rfps or the eois uploaded if there is any queries that will be settled and uh, we are looking at a collaborative approach in taking these things forward so that it actually eventually helps us in indigenization of the critical components which are required by the field arc i have finished my presentation uh, there will be any queries later on i'll uh, take on in the question answer sessions thank you thank you karan gagge for a uh, very informative talk uh, we will take the questions uh, together in the last after all three lectures are over uh, so just to have a commonality and then let them have uh, an understanding then we'll come on to the question answers right uh, <coughs> primarily like uh, having been in directed evidence myself it's uh, my uh, pet and i have a uh, very uh, fond memories of the place and thanks a lot for taking me back there uh, in a nutshell as far as what uh, kanal gargi has uh, rightly brought out uh, dy route uh, for the uh, sustaining the equipment that is the equipment which is already there uh, the systems components uh, the sub uh, assemblies of these uh, equipment are possible to be uh, done as soon as possible because the drawings are available samples are available so this becomes a very easy route further as uh, he had brought out we will be getting the development cost uh, which is the major worry of any of the msmes because the time and effort that is being utilized in setting up a, a new line of uh, production so that cost will be given and the, the bigger advantage is that once you have developed you will be declared as a source what he mentioned as free flow uh, is what is called as uh, 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 you will be identified as a source and uh, accordingly the records will be amended at dgqa so even if any agencies uh, uh, prepare a import indent and send it also that will be denied saying this there is already a in, uh, indian source available so this is one of the strongest uh, route Uh, many of you may be already supplying to the PSUs and the ordnance factories, uh, but still you do not have the status of the uh, identified source. So this is the route which is favorable. And talking in the same line, uh, the advantage of uh, the zero motor which he had mentioned. So in case you have uh, already been making something, you have some uh, uh, product in hand, you can offer it, get it regularized through them. So and uh, another advantage is the uh, testing and trials. are done by the base workshops only and it is an advantage and it is much faster uh, basically it will be doing uh, fitment function trials only so thanks a lot kanal gagge that was very educative and uh, we will take the questions at the end next i uh, Thank you, sir. we will be having the presentation by navy we have another senior officer uh, for uh, with us kabodar uh, bala sundaram of uh, show the uh, photographs please uh, uh, we have a couple of bala sundaram he is a marine engineer officer by profession he is uh, currently heading the uh, new organization which has recently been set up at coimbatore called as uh, center for Ind uh, 
indigenization and self reliance so it has come up new and uh, they have uh, uh, come to tamil nadu to take the full support so speaking about kamara balasundram he is uh, put in more than 32 years of uh, service in the indian navy a long time i'll say uh, he is a mechanical engineer he is done from uh, college of engineering gindi chennai and he's completed his masters from iit madras uh, he is uh, done about uh, on board appointments of four frontline destroyers powered by gas turbines and plethora of diesel engines and numerous auxiliaries He's also served in Indian Navy's premier dockyards at Mumbai and Vizag, and has done the coveted senior technical appointments in the Shipbuilding Center at Vishakhapatnam. He has tenured staff appointments at uh, all headquarters, starting from Naval Headquarters, Delhi, and Command Headquarters, Vishakhapatnam and Port Blair. The officer was also involved in training the Naval Technical Officers at Lonavala and the Nation Building Program of Kaveri Marine. gas turbines at gas turbine uh, research uh, establishment at bangalore with his vast experience and uh, apt attitude the officer is recently been uh, hand picked and he is uh, currently commanding and he is going to the atmanirbhar bharat uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen we have a lot to uh, listen from him because he, uh, navy has always been in the forefront of indian innovation since long they are keen and they were they are easily readily uh, accept any indigenous efforts and uh, considering as a wide profile and the keenness with which they have created this new center uh, really gives us a lot of potential so let us uh, uh, pay attention to him kamara uh, balasundram over to you sir thank you very much sir So I'm just sharing my presentation. So I just confirm I'm audible. Yes, sir. So your audio is clear, video is not visible. Yes, sir. It is uh, still loading, sir. Uh, uh, just a moment. tell your audio uh, video comes up sir you can uh, maybe comments with your uh, introduction of the organization and uh, that's it that's it slides yeah, very good morning to all present here for the august gathering good morning sir i thank the organizers for this uh, the fantastic initiative and the need of our work. i'm kamado balasundaram heading uh, csr uh, of navy presently we are uh, Uh, position here at uh, Pramato to tap the potential of uh, the Tamil Nadu. At the outset, let me assure you that the Navy is totally committed to the clarion call given by the Honorable Prime Minister for Atman Nirba Bharat and bolster the Make in India initiative. In the next 12 minutes, let me give an overview of indigenization from the Indian Navy's perspective. Can you see the screen now, sir? Okay. 
Hey, can you hear me now, sir? Yeah, yes, well, sir. What about the presentation, sir? Yeah, yes, well, sir. The scope of my presentation is as far from the screen. You have been already touched upon by the previous speakers. I'll just go through these slides quickly. Indian Navy's shipbuilding program has started during the early 60s with INS Ajay, the first indigenous ship built by Gordon Reed Shipyard, Kolkata in 61. In the 70s and 80s, the learning curve rose through the increasingly complex design milestones of the Godavari, Brahmaputra, and Kukri class of ships. The Navy's design capability scaled higher peaks in the early 90s, with the induction of indigenously built Delhi class destroyers, followed by Shivali class 12 frigates. The ongoing construction of the first indigenous aircraft carrier built by Indian Navy's own design is a capability which only a handful of the countries can boast of. So today, actually, we have transformed from the buyer's navy to builder's navy. As on date, we have 39 ships and submarines being built in various shipyards within India. The systems on board a warship can be classified into three categories. Namely, the float pertains to the hull and associated equipment like the capsules, anchoring systems, davits, cranes, etc. The move category pertains to the main propulsion machinery, power generation, and the auxiliaries. The fight category means weapons, sensors, and various control systems and their related command and control systems. It's a matter of pride with the active participation of the Indian industry, DRDO, and academia. 90% of indigenization has been achieved in float category, whereas that is amounting to 60% in the move category and 50% in the fight category. I see these percentages as an opportunity for our industry partners to leverage and enhance their contribution. Indigenization in the Navy is need driven. The major factors that the prompt indigenization include obsolescence management, standardization, import substitution, induction of new technology, and enhancing life support in the life of the ships. To formulate what all is required to be indigenized, the Long-Term Integrated Perspective Plan, that is LTPP, is prepared with inputs from services and other ministries. From this flows the Technology Perspective Capability Roadmap, that is TPCR, which is prepared by the integrated defense staff and is available in the public domain. The TPCR was published in 2018 and provides an overview of equipment that is envisaged to be inducted into the Indian Armed Forces. This is intended to act as an overall guide for industry in planning or initiating technology development, partnerships, and the production arrangements. As I mentioned earlier, it is all available in the public domain. In addition, Navy has published its requirements through documents titled Pearl Amban and the Naval Aviation Indigenization Roadmap. I would therefore request our industry partners to access these documents for understanding indigenization requirements of the Navy for the next five to 10 years. Well, I'm sure you are all aware of DPM 2009 and DAP 2020, are guiding documents published by the Ministry of Defense for revenue and capital procurement. Currently, the major schemes available for indigenization in the Navy or through the revenue route, the MAKE scheme, the TDF, that is Technology Development Fund route, and the Innovation for Defense Excellence, that is IDEX route. All these things have been touched upon by the previous speakers also. As a general practice, the revenue route for indigenization is utilized when we look at development of items already in our inventory, that is in the service. As an important substitute, upgradation of an existing system development of a niche technology or transfer of critical technology to a make in India. This slide depicts the process flow of information and the efforts towards indigenization. The important point to note here is that the activities shown in the enclosed box require constant interaction between all stakeholders for timely and successful product realization. We in CASR will hold you to handshake with the Navy and realize your dream. These are few of the successful developments carried out through our indigenous partners for naval applications.
the general has already mentioned in his uh, previous talk. The MAKE scheme was revamped in our acquisition procedure with the release of DAP by MOD in October 2020, with an aim to achieve greater participation of Indian industrial ecosystem, including private sectors. The MAKE scheme is primarily being utilized for Indian cities by all three services for development of long-term capabilities. The target is to achieve import substitution for major equipment, systems, and even platforms, including their upgrades, the preferences given to MSMEs. The bigger players are being roped in whenever the capability is unviable to the MSMEs. The MAKE scheme is further classified into three distinct categories with MAKE 1, MAKE 2, and MAKE 3, where MAKE 1 is funded by the government and MAKE 2 and 3 are funded by the industry. The respective uh, the share of uh, funding has been given by the government and the import contents are flashed on the screen. Specifically, the MAKE 3 allows the industries to partner or in collaborate with the foreign vendors with through TOTs or JV with a mandated import content of sorry uh, indigenous content of 60 percent. Over a period of time, we have realized that for fruitful indigenousity, there has to be a mutual handholding between Navy and the firms. In order to make every make initiative a success, a team comprising of domain experts from Navy, DRDO, and the MOD called Project Facilitation Team interacts with the industry throughout the development process so as to make it a success. In addition, we have also realized that there are industries with certain niche capabilities or technologies that we in the services may not be fully aware of. Therefore, a provision has already been made in the MAKE scheme called Suomoto Proposals, wherein industries can forward their existing capabilities and willingness to partner with us. Such proposals are scrutinized by the respective service headquarters and taken forward based on mutual determinant. The same thing has been covered by my army counterpart also. The photograph of the ongoing projects under MAKE 2 is shown wherein the prototype development has already been completed. This one shows the development which is in the design stage. Coming to the Technology Development Fund, the TDF scheme was announced in 2014, wherein 90% of the project cost of prototype, prototype development is funded through DRDO as a granting aid and capped at 10 crores per project with a development timeline of two years. The main impetus is development of niche technologies for defense and civil use, not yet available in the country. The project so chosen has to be minimum of technological readiness level three, that is TRM3, which means that industry has capability and minimum required infrastructure in the domain and the proof of concept has been already achieved by the respective industry. Few examples of the project underway by Navy is shown on the slides. IDEX stands for Innovation for Defense Excellence, run under the aegis of Department of Defense Production. The scheme was launched in April 18 to encourage startups, individual innovators, and academia for technology development in defense sector. The scheme is funded through the Defense Innovation Fund, specifically created for this scheme and is governed by the Def Defense Innovation Organization under DDP, that is Department of Defense Production. The project funding is limited to 1.5 crore per startup per project. As the convener has mentioned, our complete roadmap for indigenization for the next 10 to 15 years is available in documents titled TPCR, Columban and Naval Aviation Roadmap. In addition, I'm sure they're all aware that the MOD has published three indigenization lists, one in August 20, the second in April 21, and the third in April 22, to ban the import of items. The list of items, as well as the ones pertaining to Navy, are already available in the public domain, that is www.cid.gov.in.
few of our area of interest in indigenization are flashed on the screen. Listed on this slide are a few of the items from the specific perspective of our aircraft area and the stopping class of submarine. The technical details for these items can be shared separately with the interested partners. As per the initiatives of uh, Government of India, Tamil Nadu is being developed as an industrial corridor for defense manufacturing. To leverage the potential industries in this southern corridor, Navy has set up CISR at Coimbatore, that is Center for Indigenization and Self-Reliance. This body will deal with indigenization needs of the Navy as a single point contact. The details are flashed on the screen. The mail address is mentioned at the bottom of the screen. To conclude, the summary of various information portals highlighted during the presentation is as flash. Last but not the least, let me reiterate, Indian Navy has always been at the forefront of promoting indigenous defense manufacturing and has been collaborating with both public and private sectors to achieve self-reliance. Therefore, it is imperative that we continue to strive towards developing better technologies to make ourselves more self-reliant and superior to our adversaries on land, air and seas. Thank you very much. I finished my presentation. I am ready to take the questions at the end of the session. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for a co very comprehensive uh, uh, talk and uh, very educative. And also thank you for having covered the capital as well as uh, the IDEX uh, and TDF route also. Uh, and uh, also uh, thank you for having placed your confidence on Tamil Nadu Defense uh, uh, Corridor and having relocated yourself into uh, Coimbatore. I am sure we have just uh, begun to materialize this uh, and we will soon be consolidating all our efforts and bringing you the results. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Again. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We will have the result, uh, the question answers at the end after the Air Force session, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We will be always there to bridge the gap through this bridge initiative. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, next we have, having uh, listened to the Army and the uh, yes. Naval officials will have their talk by uh, Air Force. Uh, we have uh, five base repair depot, Sulur, uh, Coimbatore, uh, the officials from there who will be talking. Uh, uh, may I request the officers to kindly introduce themselves and uh, comments, please. Thank you. Over to you. So your uh, audio is muted. Kindly unmute yourself.
Uh, your uh, video is visible, audio is not coming, sir. We are yet to hear you, sir. Uh, 5BRT Sulu, you can unmute yourself. You are not audible. Only video is available. Uh, we are not able to hear you yet, sir. Just trying some uh, behind. Uh, can we test it, sir? Uh, uh, request you to log out and log in again, sir. And uh, initially, it will be talking about, uh, it will be showing uh, an option to mute and unmute. Uh, gentlemen, in the uh, meantime, when uh, they are, uh, uh, they are uh, audible, uh, 5 BRD Air Force is uh, heavily inclined towards the aeronautical. Uh, they have some uh, aircraft uh, uh, systems which are to be indigenized. They have some R&D work and uh, as well as manufacturing. So this is a, a good scope we have. And uh, maybe like uh, uh, as you all may be knowing anything going on board uh, 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 on flight, uh, we have to have a certification called as AS9000. So that is a qualification for being uh, uh, the thing aerospace uh, 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 manufacturer so that may be considered in the meantime those uh, which are uh, ground based equipment we can uh, con uh, continue with the current certifications of ISO is already calling. Uh, if I had BID, please log, you can uh, log out and log in. You'll be able to uh, get the voice. Uh, no. Uh, uh, till the time uh, 5 BRD logs in, uh, let's have a talk from uh, Dr. Vardarajan. Uh, just a second. Uh, so your voice is uh, not yet come. Are you able to hear me? So if you raise your hand if you are able to hear me. Right. Uh, we are not able to hear your voice. If you can bring the mic somewhere close by or check the settings. Uh, right, sir, we will take uh, five minutes. I will uh, 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 call the next speaker. In the meantime, probably you can uh, get it rectified. Right.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, next I uh, request uh, Dr. Vardarajan, uh, who is from the Director uh, General of Quality Assurance, a key person, in fact, the, uh, it is the establishment which is very critical to accepting any defense uh, stores into the uh, defense, especially Army and uh, partly into Navy. So he's been, he was heading the facilitation sale at uh, He's uh, We are lucky to have him here. So may I request Dr. Vardarajan, please. Good afternoon, one and all, uh, respected uh, uh, Vice Chancellor of uh, Sri Armaniam University, uh, the founder of uh, uh, Bridge Bharat, uh, who is bridging the Bharat, and uh, the team of Enroute and uh, Industry as well as uh, academic friends all and of the dais. I thank uh, this organizing team for providing me this opportunity. Uh, not to tell about the schemes, not to tell about uh, what are all the facilities which are available, how to exploit it. The exploitation part comes not by advice, not by facilitating. At the end of the day, we should have done the job and shown it. So many progress we talk, we keep talking, we, we keep talking 20 years before we told we are a developing country, 50 years before we told developing country, today we are talking about we are a developing country and another 50 years after that also we will call ourselves as a developing country. So the question of uh, developing keeps coming, we call it as continual improvement in our uh, quality terminology, but the dream of developed country, let us see at what generation we are going to get on that. Uh, this is the journey what uh, we have commenced and we keep doing it. Uh, today it's a mixture of uh, uh, academia as well as industry. And I represent uh, Director General of Quality Assurance. Uh, I'm uh, the Senior Quality Assurance Officer uh, uh, giving the quality assurance coverage for the explosives or the energetic materials for both the ammunition and the missile system. I've got an office located in Urban Kaudu in Uti. In addition, I've been given the additional responsibility as a nodal officer for a DGQA facilitation cell. Uh, we have been uh, operating this office in two branches, one in Coimbatore and another at uh, Chennai. We started our activities in 2020. And yes, uh, we work on two verticals basically. Uh, we work on uh, innovation vertical as well as the indigenization verticals. And last one and a half to two years of time, uh, we could get a good amount of uh, uh, success uh, maybe the success rate is around 10% what we have been expected and uh, our failure rate was more than 200% and each and every vertical we failed, we failed, we failed and each and every effort we failed that became a uh, stepping stone for us and today proudly we say we succeeded, we have achieved and we are achieving further more results on that. Especially both in terms of innovation as well as uh, indigenization. I just give you a, a brief uh, glimpse about what exactly we are doing it. Well, this is a good, uh, what you can say, yeah, model which has been, uh, uh, successful model which has been worked out, uh, especially for MSMEs as well as academic institutions. You see, you're talking about indigenization, innovation, especially for the different services, converting into a product, converting into an order, getting a turnover, and getting an money out of it. At the end of the day, money matters. All said and done, it's not that easy. And people will say, I have got, uh, I'm good in working for defense. Because I'm the man who is supposed to do the inspection of it. And we know what is the quality at which we, pe we people talk about. When I talk about an, uh, a cabling system, ordinary te a telephone cable comes to me, which I need to put it in the dustbin. Uh, people have to be made clearly aware about what is EMA, EMC testing, what is the pentafide testing. When it comes to SIMLAC approval, it, how it has to be done. What is the quality requirements we have got on that? So basically, we are the most unliked people by the industry. So how to convert uh, uh, the most unliked people into the liked man? So naturally, you'll have to go deep root, sit with them, guide him, facilitate him, encourage him to get the job done. Those days have gone where uh, you go back before the inspectors as well as uh, for getting your work done. 
the days are different now, the things are different. We come to the industry rather than you come to us. And we have been interacting nearly around 600 MSMEs have mapped as on date with the core competencies what they have got. And nearly around uh, 2,800 uh, uh, engineering students have got uh, where I keep doing my hackathons, idatons, so all these activities we keep doing it. I was I'm basically the mentor for Rattle Incubation Mission where we do the incubation activities and innovation activities for uh, uh, the academic institutions as well. Uh, so, to begin with, we started this exercise in 2019 when Tamil Nadu Defence Corridor was announced first in uh, uh, June, January 2019 was been announced. And uh, Coimbatore or, uh, was uh, declared, uh, we have a Kodisha Defence Innovation Centre. People may not be aware what is Kodisha, it is nothing but an association, Coimbatore District Small Industries Association. So, they came up uh, with a proposal to Ministry of Defence saying that they wanted to create the entire uh, uh, defense innovation activities where uh, uh, entire land, building and uh, money will be provided by them and equal contribution to be done by DIO and they came up with a pro detailed project report for putting up the first defense innovation hub in India. And 2020 October uh, we converted it as a uh, defense innovation hub and I am adding that uh, defense innovation hub from the Ministry of Defense. Uh, uh, direct uh, DIO perspectives of uh, Department of Defense Production. And then subsequently we married it along with Atal Incubation Mission, where uh, for this uh, Defense Innovation of 15 crores, uh, funding is provided by Department of Defense Production. Uh, this is exclusively for your capital equipment. Uh, now I have an, uh, three five axis CNC missions and uh, uh, portable handheld cameras. I've got all uh, the machines which is required for uh, fabricating of a uh, prototype. I've got a metal 3D printer. This is all the infrastructure which has been provided from the funding of the government. And we have got an another vertical where uh, every year uh, 5 crores has been provided by Atal Incubation Mission which is working under Niti Ayog, basically for innovation activities which we uh, work for it. And the equal contribution has been done by uh, the Kodisha which uh, uh, this got converted as Kodisha Defense Innovation and Atal Incubation Center. Now it has been called as, uh, uh, this is a Section 8 company, it is a non-profitable company which is extending the services of uh, uh, the member industries not only for uh, available in Coimbatore. It is across uh, Tamil Nadu Defense Corridor we have been working on that. Uh, you can go to the next slide please. Uh, this is the one and only, till today this is the only Defense Innovation Hub. The advantage of Defense Innovation Hub is, uh, uh, any indigenization efforts or any indigenization activities, we get the entire RFPs, RFIs, whatever the thing which has been floated. And uh, when you are interacting with a defense innovation hub, the question of placing an RFP, placing an UI, placing an, uh, going for a tender, nothing happens. Straight away the contract will be placed on this defense innovation hub. And it is the duty of the Defence Innovation Hub to map the corresponding member industries available in the Defence Innovation Hub for executing of the order. So there are two bottlenecks what we observed, because these are all the failures we had. We run Kalyana Malai program on every four, uh, weekly three days we contact uh, Kalyana Malai program from morning 9 o'clock to night 11 o'clock. Each and every industry come, sit with us, they will say what is their core competency, we then uh, uh, find, uh, match that core competency with what are all the handful of problems we have got. See, this is an indigenization, you can take it up and this matches your requirement. All these things said and done went on very well and uh, some industries came forward. They invested nearly around 50 to 60 lakhs for prototype development. Uh, so industry funded, uh, it was all our industry funded only. The day they completed the prototyping, uh, it went for two years of uh, trials. You know from DGQ or any uh, trial agencies, uh, testing agency will take trial first in harsh climate, then in uh, cold climate, and then we conduct in rainy climate, then we conducted a 100% humidity content, and everything if it is passing there, we conduct uh, trials in Mars, we conduct trials in Moon, by then it will take five years to get completed. So these are the two problems we had. Uh, subsequently, the industry has lost interest. MSM is literally, they lost interest because uh, you wanted us to put it on prototype, we put money on prototype, that too at the time of pandemic, we developed the product, they, to, they have been taken into DPSU, DPSU told wonderfully developed, yeah, beautiful, DGQ has approved wonderful, but today I don't have an order, if any order comes at that time I will place one. 
So whatever the interest the industry took uh, it was to put our exercise. So that is why we went to another route where uh, you need not have to worry, we have a defense innovation hub, the government has created the defense innovation hub, the order will be placed on them, the prototype costing, whatever the pooling of money, what it has been done, from there it has been given. So that was working uh, wonderfully well, and all the testing and validation uh, time got reduced to, to six months. All of a sudden from two to three years of uh, testing and validation, it came to six months. because. The owners of testing and validation, because mo more money is involved on testing and validation, more time is involved. So whoever is the order placing authority, they will have to do the validation and testing at the first stage. If the first prototype fails, the second prototype the industry gives, it will be jointly uh, funded by DPSC or the who is the order placing authority. So this was an advantage what we had uh, with the Defense Innovation Hub. This Defense Innovation Hub has got uh, three major players. The one is the uh, Department of Defense Production, the second is the uh, industry, the third is Academicia. The role of Academicia is very, very important in this because no MSME is willing to invest on prototype. So from where the money for the prototype has to come? The money for the prototype has to come from innovation. If it is a uh, product which is for import substitution, where design drawings are not available, we do the 3D scanning, we go to portable scanners and then we do the 3D modeling. After doing the 3D modeling, we do the value addition based on the trend of the day technology. How it has been done from the trend of the day technology is, you might be aware that uh, post pre-independence, before 1947, India is a self-reliant country when it comes to defense production. None of the equipments have been imported at that time. Post-1947 till 90s, uh, uh, like our generation, we are V, v generation, 60s, 70s, 70s and 80 kids are called as Unnundriyada uh, generation. That means that when we study, my father will say, hey, what the course I am saying, you will have to study on that. You don't know anything. You don't know about your future. Now we studied, followed exactly the footsteps of father and we got a new generation. My son always say, Papa, you don't know anything about it. We, it our technology is a too good a technology. So this generation belongs, a small gap of a generation, we call it as Onum Triyada generation. That that generation was fully dependent on the Soviet Union. Like majority of the systems, especially for the Air Force, Navy and Army, till today what is there in the inventory comes under uh, uh, Soviet, uh, whether it is Ukraine or uh, uh, Russian system. We had a Russian legacy, full of Russian legacy. And post 80s, we slowly moved towards, uh, uh, you can say, European systems, we had some good amount of Israeli system, we had a good amount of, uh, 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 we have put up a Korean system also in that, uh, Israeli systems, South African systems, and we have an entire European systems were with us. And now we are slowly started moving into an uh, uh, US legacy where we wanted to bring in a lot of equipment from the US. Do one thing. Then we will say, we will speak when we are speaking, we will not be able to hear us. So what we had uh, what what is the data bank we had is uh, we had the legacy of the entire world. Now the time today has come that uh, you need to integrate the entire world. And India is a country which has got all the technology which is available throughout the world which we need to enhance a power plant. And today we can't say that what Europe is doing, what US is doing, what Russia is doing, where well, everything is available in India now. Now that is the thing where uh, a couple of months back a policy decision has been taken, where henceforth India will not import any new technologies. Or any new technology which India wants in the defense platforms has to be indigenous. So that also a committee has been formed, any new technology you want to import, that needs the approval of RM and uh, PM. So no, nothing less than that you can do on that. And uh, this is how uh, we have got the system, now we got into uh, change. And uh, when we talk about the verticals, where uh, do the uh, business or the innovation, well we are talking with the MSMEs, we are not talking with the corporates. The way, of, way in which you talk with the corporates is totally different when it comes to MSMEs. MSMEs is the root of it. 
people all will say in a seminar or anything vemma sami they are the best people they are the brain child without them we can't do it but the next day if you go and say so you do one thing you come as a tire to tupplier to them from them we are get, getting it so better uh, i am very comfortable in dealing with corporates only to them you come in this is this is a daily phenomena which keeps happening on that so now what i did uh, the work what i did is i have been working with lmw i have been working with uh, uh, prakol and uh, uh, lnt wall these are all the three major verticals what i have been working we know where to do the work and where to work on the strength of the people so entire procurement itself i converted into uh, two verticals i don't deal with any of the regular procurements i deal only with indigenization so my uh, first i made my job very clear i'll work only on indigenization where initially first year target i was given 50 crores if it is possible do a 50 crores worth of indigenization god bless i have been blessed with now i have completed 240 crores of indigenization and another uh, 800 crores worth of indigenization is on hand that means that in tamil nadu defense corridor alone if you are able to do this much of indigenization in a matter of one year now it is one and a half years now what is the potential which is available for you only thing you have to be facilitated properly the facilitation comes where you don't invest in a thing don't see that defense business is a business only on which i am going to work so the bridging of uh, uh, innovators as well as the msme and uh, the user helped me a lot because i had around 10 products which were supposed to be indigenous industry was not willing to come up i had uh, i am ment- mentoring around 42 startups now i gave it to the startup for, for doing the prototype development i could get the funding from the investors I, we have our own angel investors these people started giving funding to me for developing of these product the product has been developed i am the nodal agency for uh, dgk the nodal agency for getting the ipr rights ip rights with respect to nrdc we have got a, a tie up where for all the defense products any new technology dgk is supposed to get the ip rights i got the ip rights for them this is all uh, innovators a startup working in an academic institution the another uh, area of academic institution is i take normally a uh, loose component systems and give it as a final year project the third year and final year project so by then they completed they get me the prototype of it i will ask the member msme to code for the tender msme will code for the tender and get the tender the prototype validation would have been done by the startup the startup will earn a royalty from the msme 1.5 to 2% that will be absorbed in the cost of the code, code what they are going to do it and at the end of the day it will be nearly 40 to 50 percent less than that of the imported cost so the in the bargain what happened the entire chain of activities my country has saved 50 percent of money on my foreign exchange the msme has got 10 years of order and then were the startup who have put on mind and heart and soul into the work he has got a sustained business for 10 years this is how the ecosystem starts working for that all the three have to have a faith and all the three have to have an patience because getting into a defense innovation or getting into an uh, defense supply is as good as cultivating a coconut tree cultivating a coconut tree first to two years please don't expect anything you are supposed to put the salt you will have to keep watering 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 that's all but the time the coconut trees comes up starts fetching that is for the th- three generations you are going to get the money out of it so that patience basically was totally missing when we started this exercise no naturally because you need to bring the confidence you have to build the cbms are very important for that that we were able to do it just go to the next slide i'll just brief upon these uh, various activities which we have been carrying on next one please so this is what uh, we started as uh, kodisha defense innovation center and natural incubation center where uh, Uh, we have got now around 40 startups which has been incubated and uh, we have one number of awards we have got around uh, 350 crores worth of order what we have got now uh, through this uh, innovation challenges next one please uh, this is what uh, kick starting of the activities defense secretary kick started the activities next uh, this was the actual date on which uh, i started working on it uh, 28th of october from there we kick started all the activities next one please 
So we have an MOU signed with all the people. We have an MOU with the Air Force. We have got an MOU with Navy and uh, Air Force along with an academicia. We have got around uh, 22 academicia, which is part of it now as of now. Next one, please. So these are all the various uh, infrastructure what we have got. Uh, complete uh, set of infrastructure is available for any prototype development. Next. So these are all the people we work with. We work with uh, Niti Aayog, who is a uh, uh, prime funder for us. And then DIO is another funder for uh, capital procurement. And then Godisha is also the one of the investors for that. And this is what uh, we do on behalf of Indian Army and uh, Air Force and Navy. They always support on us. Next one, please. So these are all uh, various uh, uh, outreach what we have been carrying out on that. Next one, please. This is a milestone what we have re reach, uh, reached in uh, the first uh, one and a half years of existence. So I work on two verticals. One is innovation, defense innovation, uh, as well as indigenization. When it comes to defense innovation, we have incubated 42 startups, out of which uh, we won uh, six disc, uh, disc challenges. We call it a SIDEX. Uh, people might be talking about various uh, innovation and defense excellence uh, challenges. Uh, we have won seven. We have won uh, two open challenges. And already uh, the startups have received the uh, orders also. One order has been for uh, see through armors for uh, uh, done through Big Bang Boom Solutions, one of the startup. Uh, it has been given an order of uh, 170 crores where AON has been issued, J square has been finalized, and final order has been placed. Because these are all, when you win a this challenge, your order is on a single order basis. There is no price negotiation, there is no discussions on that. Straight away order will be placed on the startup which has uh, developed that product. Uh, here, when I come to the startups, I work one. If it is a dual use application uh, innovator, then we incubate him. Because if somebody wants to come and say that I want to work only for a defense, I'll say, please, enough, get out of this place. There is no fun in saying that I will work only for the defense. Unless otherwise the product what is working on that, it should have both the verticals in it. Whereas we had a lot of problems like uh, we had one uh, uh, problem statement of friend or foe identifier, IR combat identifier. Uh, this product was originally imported. And uh, we developed the product, we went to Army Design Bureau for uh, the disc challenge. When we went, it was summarily rejected. But within two days, we got a call from Mr. Kumar. Air Force told this is the product which I have been looking for. All, all, all along I have been importing it. That fellow was been immediately, he was given an order. I went for a couple of days, three, four days, we went abroad and came back and I told him whether have you participated in the tender. Yes, sir, I have finished all the things, sir. I have given my quote. Uh, the time I gave the quote, within half an hour I got the supply order for uh, 2,500 numbers. This is not the procedure, generally it happens. Then I checked it, told him he quoted a price of 174 rupees when the imported cost is around uh, 2,800 rupees per piece. So Western Commander was so happy with that, when somebody is going to give at this cost, then immediately it was uh, in uh, the commander's power itself and he has given it. The amount of saving what it has happened, but uh, that fellow was not able to sustain his business when it, uh, during the pandemic period. So we took three startups for converting them into an oxygen generator manufacturers. So literally around 2,000 pieces of oxygen generator uh, sorry, oxygen concentrators. We started manufacturing through these startups because at the end of the day, they, they need to be constantly funded. The funding has to come from investor. The investor has to get a, a, a payback with that money actually. So that is why we always say that work on a dual applications. The day you start working on a dual application, you will have better benefits out of it. And the second part, what we ask the innovators to work on is, is on uh, uh, the indigenization of the products, where uh, the list of products for the indigenization, we worked at the back end, we put it as a majority, maybe uh, or may not be aware, I don't know, it is called Stegen Defense Portal, what it has been put in. The complete system has been put in. Uh, for the engineering college students, first year we start with uh, ide ideation, and we give this list of products which is to be indigenized. Like I have got uh, capacitors, I have got uh, resistors, I have got an IC. These are all the products which needs to be indigenized. So I take this and give it as a uh, second year project itself. So he comes on the final year, he completes it as a BTEC project and gives it back. There was an issue which came, There's such a small resistor, if you are taking as a BTEC project, I will not award you your thesis. 
the fellow started crying and we told him, if that is the case, why India is importing that? So this is the two major verticals we keep working on that. With the indigenization now 370 crores we have completed now. Another 280 crores with 170 products, design drawing, prototype, everything is ready. We are working for the entire defense corridor. It is not required that I am sitting in Trichy, I am sitting in Chennai, I am sitting in Ozur, I am doing it. Any industry who is interested, please come to DGQ facilitation cell. We will facilitate you for taking up the products for indigenization at a minimum risk. So the small introduction, I just wanted to give it. Thank you one and all for providing a platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for an uh, interesting speech, sir. And, uh, and it's also very good to hear to the uh, actual success story that has happened within Tamil Nadu. It's a motivation to all. Uh, next, uh, uh, let's have uh, the five BRD officials uh, talking. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, hope uh, you are now okay with the system, sir. Uh, sir, are you able to hear me, sir? I'm five BRD. Excellent strength, guys. Uh, okay, sir. Kindly uh, introduce yourself and uh, uh, go ahead, sir. Thank you. So, very good morning to all the participants. Uh, first of all, I am extremely sorry for the inconvenience caused due to the audio problem from our end. And uh, on behalf of the Air Officer Commanding 5BRD, I thank the organizers for giving us an opportunity to introduce 5BRD to this August gathering. Uh, though uh, IBRD is uh, very much closely located to Tanjavur and Trichapalli, uh, many of the people and industrial partners around the place are not familiar with what IBRD does and how we are connected to the industry. So, this is a great opportunity given to us to introduce ourselves and what we are undertaking and what we are looking for the industries, which I would be able to share within another five minutes. Uh, since the majority of the procedures of indigenization and so, uh, documents and all the other relevant aspects have been covered by our speakers uh, well in detail. So, I will not be wasting any of the time in uh, covering up the indigenization procedure. I will just limit myself with the requirements of Air Force and how IBRD can work as a uh, platform to interact with the industries to project the requirement, indigenization requirements of not only IBRD, the entire Air Force itself. So, Phi BRD, uh, about myself, I am Wing Commander Raghavendran. I am primarily from the MiG-21 aircraft background, having uh, had a tenure of uh, engineering officer at the uh, first line activities and a senior technical officer, and I had a tenure as a instructional staff in the uh, MiG-21 Tetra School, and I performed the role of a joint director for the MiG-21 aircraft maintenance cell at the air headquarters. And now, for the last three years, I am looking up the indigenization and the Nodal Technology Center activities of 5BRD. 5BRD is primarily a BRD associated with the Western Aircraft Fleet. Uh, it's one of the BRD of Indian Air Force and uh, we are having a uniqueness of uh, looking after the Western Fleet. In the Western Fleet, we are looking after the overhauling and servicing of Fiago and Dormier aircraft. Apart from that, we are also associated with the indigenous development of aircraft for spares for many of the Western Aircraft Fleets. In addition to that, we have a notable servicing division which undertakes the complete overhauling activities of the aircraft portables, that is the LRUs and sub-assembly level. Presently, we have been designated to undertake the ROH of the PC-7 aircraft fleet because of the non-availability of the transfer of technology from the OE. This is one of the most important activity which presently we are undertaking and we are having a lot of requirements towards this. So, uh, the detail and the requirements of all the spans which we are looking out for the indigenization as well as for establishment of Innos ROS technology are being shared with the Bridge Bar Council through uh, retired Wing Commander Jay Kumar. I will be sharing the complete details along with him. And uh, since we are co-located, I would uh, request all the industrial partners of uh, these places like Trichy, Tanjavur and all these places since we are very much uh, located very close to you, uh, we are any time ready to uh, take out uh, time to spend with you to show us our requirement and what we are undertaking here and what we are expecting the industries to join with us. This can be shown and displayed to them whenever they are getting time. They can just mail 
and we will be able to provide a slot for them and we are most are welcome they can join with us and uh, extend their support with respect to indigenization and establishment of roh technology and uh, primarily since all the aspects of uh, indigenization requirements are covered i would just like to emphasize one point that with respect to aviation the indigenization of aviation space has got a lot of quality connotations and we are looking for a very stringent quality requirements and we primarily classify the airborne stores into two categories they are critical and non critical when it comes to critical that means those packs which are concerned to the flight safety with respect to the safety of the aircraft as well as the air crew those items we classify them as critical spares which are required to be cleared semi lac and rcma the other items which are non critical to the airborne applications are certified within the bird with our own quality assurance name this is the primary difference between the critical and non critical items so uh, we are primarily looking for the establishment of rh technology 82 spares of pc7 aircraft alone in addition to that we are expected to get certain spares of lca also which are procured ex abroad so in that we have two prong approach which we are looking forward one is establishment of technology by some industry and transferring the technology to the iaf bnd for further progress the other aspect is known as long term repair agreement where is we are ready to take you as a repair partner wherein we can have a long term agreement where the spares will be handed over to you for overhauling and in turn subsequently handing it over to air force back for use these two modes of approach we are looking forward so uh, since all other aspects are covered and uh, already we have delayed i would not like to waste much of your time and uh, i would request all of you to be in uh, touch with uh, in the matter jay kumar sir we have yes, we, he had a recently he has visited us and we have shared and we have shown him what is the required we are expecting from you and i will be sharing all the relevant details which are valuable inputs to you for you to identify what you can take up in future we will be sharing with her, with him and you are requested to participate in the next whenever we are organizing any industrial meet or seminars we would definitely extend our invitation to all the participants you are most welcome to join with us and not withstanding that next seminar you are at the liberty to come and visit us any time by simply giving one mail to our id we would facilitate the security clearance and we would request you to come have a look at the facilities available here and items available for indigenization and repair and whichever suits to your compatibility your capability you are most welcome to participate in the indigenization developmental activities and once again on behalf of uh, iaf and uh, behalf of air of the commanding 5 bd i would request to thanks uh, for the organizers for extending an opportunity for us to take part in a, such a good big event and uh, i am uh, my apologies for uh, inconvenience caused from our end thank you very much sir. thanks a lot for uh, vikumar raghavendra and uh, thank you for uh, welcoming everybody and uh, showing us an open door for uh, entry into uh, air force which was always a difficult one uh, for anybody to enter to the defense thanks a lot uh, just to, uh, to complete the cycle we have uh, heard from the uh, people the, the defense authorities as far as uh, what they require now uh, we will have a talk from the uh, industry Uh, representation in uh, Tamil Nadu, and uh, followed by a short talk by the uh, finance. So, uh, may I re uh, request uh, Mr. Ra Rajapa Rajkumar, who is the chairman of uh, DCIC, Defence uh, Chamber of Industry and Commerce, uh, as well as uh, President uh, Belchia, to share his uh, thoughts about uh, what we have as far as the industries are concerned. and what are the constraints uh, they feel when they want to get into the defense uh, business right over to you sir respected vice chancellor priyam manimay university officials from various organization and the officials from defense on zoom 
and my dear students, good afternoon to all of you. At the outset, I like to express my sincere thanks to Bridge Bharat for arranging this seminar for the benefit of <coughs> MSME industries in and around Trichy. For the benefit of all of you and uh, the defense officials on Zoom, I would like to say something about Trichy. You know, around 45 to 50 years back, the ancillary station in Trichy has been started with around four to five units uh, who have started manufacturing very low technology items. Say, you can call this a cut size or painting like that. Today, we have around 400 MSME units in and around Trichy. They say Tanju, Pudukotai, and the other side, uh, Lalkudi area. We have 450 MSME units, uh, mainly serving for BHL, and also we are doing some exports also. You know, today started with low-tech items. Today we are doing a lot of high-tech items, even for nuclear power plant, uh, uh, Kudangulam, our people have supplied. Even now, for the uh, third and fourth plant, uh, the ma main components is being supplied by Trichy Industries. See, uh, I can tell you, we are one of good in welding in Trichy. You know, it is called a fabrication hub of South Asia. You know, the welding, what you get it from Trichy, you will not be able to get it anywhere in India. Okay. In fact, uh, I have been to Germany. I, apart from uh, boiler components, we manufacture windmill towers also. In fact, I, uh, in, uh, say in India, if you take uh, 100 towers are being uh, installed every year, 60 to 70 towers goes from Trichy alone. Now I want you to know about the I mean, I mean, uh, facility created in Trichy. That's the reason why I am telling you all these things. Sir. Uh, I had been to Germany around uh, 10 years back. At that time itself, I said, I am coming from Trichy. They say, are you coming from Tower City? Like that. It has got that type of name all over the world. So, uh, the total capacity of Trichy is, in Tamil Nadu is around 14 lakhs tons per annum. Out of which, uh, Trichy alone can do 7 lakhs. So much of capacity has been created and a lot of tech new technology has been developed. Today, really, I, I, I'm really I'm not happy to say that uh, uh, we are doing only two lakh tons. There is a lot of capacities available, and it's the right time we have to, uh, we can develop uh, defense product. And, uh, you know, Trichy is famous for various clusters also. Uh, we have started uh, uh, one cluster dealing with consumables in the name of BIDAS which is doing very well. We buy the consumers only from the approved sources. Similarly, we have started uh, one cluster in the name of Brahmas, where we buy the raw materials from the reputed manufacturers and just give it to people. Similarly, we have started one more uh, cluster in the name of Treat. Uh, the total outlay of the project is 103 crores, out of which uh, uh, 56 crores has been given as a grant in, uh, by the government of India. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, for Arjun tank, first tank has been manufactured by Avadi. Uh, to them, we have supplied a machined hull. That the fabrication was done by Reliance, and the machining was done by our treat, Trich Rafali Engineering Technology Cluster, which has been assembled without any problem. They have given an appreciation letter, actually. So, so much of capacity, capability, and technology development has happened in Trichy, it has to be used now. As far as the defense is concerned, as you all of you know, for the past four to five years, a lot of uh, seminar is being conducted, webinar is being conducted. But uh, in real sense, I, I have to tell there is not much of improvement. There is a gap. In fact, I should thank Bridge Bharat. They have started bridging the gap now. My sincere thanks to you, sir, again. And uh, similarly, probably we may have to conduct a lot of seminars, we have to just give a boost to the industries as uh, 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 dear Varadarajan uh, said, uh, there is a gap, uh, people are not interested in coming. And uh, here what we want from uh, defense, 
in fact, a lot of seminars I have also just uh, told the people. See, we need the total list of the product required by defense along with the uh, quantity and the value. And uh, what are the items imported presently by the department? Uh, everything I need along with the uh, quantity and value so that any product can be developed by Trichy people, sir. I, I can say we can match any quality requirements. Absolutely, there is no second opinion. And even I had been to China more than seven times. They appreciate about Trichy quality. Say we are good in technology development, but we are really slow. Whereas China, no, every year when I go, no, there is, uh, we are able to see the uh, um, I mean, new technology and a uh, um, uh, lot of modification is being done. You know, in Trichy alone, in the past 10 years, we have imported more than 600 crores worth of missions from China alone. But it is doing well now. Okay. Similarly, a lot of capacity is available. It has to be encashed. As I told you, you know, uh, all these defense people are there. And we need the total list, sir. We can do any type of uh, component. Uh, to your uh, quality requirement. I think that has to be bridged. I uh, once again request uh, Bridge Barras to take, uh, I mean, uh, uh, take initiative in conducting this type of seminar, which will be very much useful to the MSME units in and around Trichy. With these few, few words, I like to uh, once again express my sincere thanks to all of you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for sharing the, uh, the capabilities of the Trichy corridor and uh, also putting forward the requirements, uh, what are the, our expectation to prosper in different sector. Uh, in my opinion, maybe the uh, sharing of uh, complete uh, list of items required along with the quantity might be feasible, whereas uh, revealing the value may not be uh, within the procedures. Uh, thank you for adding to that. Uh, what I was uh, talking about is uh, specific requirements like uh, small items against which ROPs are uh, raised. Uh, we have the uh, positive integration list which has already been uploaded in the uh, uh, open uh, forum wherein the complete uh, items have been sh uh, shown along with the photographs and what are the requirements. And uh, like as he brought out, it is there in region also. Uh, individual uh, establishments have also put up their own uh, requirements. So more or less everything is available online and uh, including the make one, two, three projects also. Uh, we will work on this together. And uh, what uh, the defense officials will be adding on to this, we will uh, share after this. Uh, the production, the requirement, uh, both cannot come together unless we have the uh, money behind it. So we will have a brief talk by uh, Brigadier Kannan, retired, uh, who is currently the advisor for the defense vertical of uh, Bank of Baroda. Uh, he will be uh, enlightening us on what uh, aspects uh, they are trying to uh, give it to us. Uh, Brigadier Kannan, sir. Uh, after this talk, we will have the address by uh, Vice Chancellor, followed by question answer. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it firstly gives me immense pleasure to be part of this seminar. I thank uh, Wing Commander Jay Kumar and his team of Bridge Bharat for giving us this opportunity. So uh, I am uh, Brigadier Kanan. I retired from the Army in 2019 after about 35 years of service. I was in the artillery. And last eight months, I am working with Bank of Baroda. I am their defense banking advisor. 
that's a new vertical that has been created by Bank of Baroda. So as part of my charter, we are also looking at a lot of close coordination with uh, Tamil Nadu industry, Defense Industrial Corridor. And we have been constantly interacting with them. We have already sanctioned loans worth about 100 crores to the companies who are already working in Tandico. And the Bank of Baroda in any case is uh, you know, funding a lot of MSMEs. So, and this was a good opportunity for us to, you know, come and meet the MSME representatives face to face and get to know their problems and how to, especially when you're working for the defense corridor, as was explained by uh, Mr. Natarajan also, that, you know, you can't look at it as, you know, giving you easy returns. So you have to stay in it for some time. And so that means your money is blocked for a long period of time. So we are customizing products also for the, uh, looking at customizing product for defense related MSMEs. And to that end, we will take some feedback also. And I have Mr. Jay Prasad here with me, who is looking after the MSME of Tanjavur, Puducherry regions. In Tricharapalli, we have a separate regional office, which is coming up, which is shifting from Puducherry to Tricharapalli. So we'll be able to interact uh, much closer with the MSME industry. So to give you specific details of the MSME product that we have and what all to look for when you as an MSME, you know, ask for a loan from a bank, what are the aspects that you should ensure, I will request Mr. Jay Prasad to take on now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, respected dignitaries, uh, defense officials and other uh, MSME um, representatives, thank you all. Thank you for the opportunity first. Uh, just I'm briefing the which are the uh, requirement from the bank side for funding of the MSME units. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a common for any MSMEs what are the basic licenses are required or the uh, technical license are required to pr produce the products. Okay, that's the first point. Then the, uh, the normal phenomena of the uh, clearances like a, uh, pollution control or the which are the uh, clearances are applicable for the particular industry or the particular unit that is to be applied, that is to be up given. Then the general aspect of uh, GST and uh, um, other uh, ITR papers to be submitted for the uh, process of the uh, their papers. Uh, here I like to uh, say that uh, suppose uh, there are two different uh, kind of uh, units will be there. Probably the startup units newly they are starting up and other is already established units who have the background. Okay, those units can uh, come. So the papers might be have a differences in both the sides because already an established units may have all the required papers, all the licenses um, will be there with them. In such cases, the process will be more simple because they have a uh, fulfillment of all our checklist required papers, which are the papers are required will be with them. Okay. In case of the startups, uh, newly started and in such cases, we have to look at that the background of the person, what uh, who is starting up that unit and what kind of background he is having and uh, whether he got the uh, work order from the defense and uh, which are the uh, uh, work, orders cup, work orders are available with him to proceed with that. So based on that, we used to process the financials. Okay. And uh, um, we have plenty of products more suitable to the MSME units. Um, um, even uh, there are products it's based on their stock requirement what are the stock availability will be there then uh, it would be called cash credit we used to give the product of cash credit suppose sometimes the stock may not be always available with them and uh, they are dealing with uh, uh, work orders and they are doing like a job works the stocks are not uh, available stocks are not per pertains to them it is uh, taken from somebody else in such cases we used to prefer the overdraft facilities okay this is the second product even there are some more uh, um, innovative products. It is, it is a long product only, but it is a little uh, developed products. We can say that it's called uh, bill discounting also. Suppose like a MSME unit is they are getting the materials on credit basis and there are suppliers are there in the market to, to which are the pro items to be produced. That materials, uh, the raw materials they are getting on credit basis from the market. Then on production, they are supplying to the defense but the, uh, the de uh, departments may take some cycle of process to uh, uh, pay back to them, probably a 30 days credit period or 60 days credit period. In such cases, we are having a provision called bill discounting. Once the supply is done to the uh, civil uh, defense uh, uh, pe people, then the document will be there is uh, recorded that these are all the items are supplied 
and uh, once they also are approved that yes, these all items are received, we will make the payment on the 30 days notice or 60 days notice, whichever the time du duration they are giving. Then on the receipt of that uh, acknowledgement, the bill will be immediately discounted and the amount will be credited to them. And, and another point is it is all digitalized. Every process is fully digitalized. So they need not to visit the bank to uh, carry on all the process. So such kind of uh, provisions are available today. So a lot of innovations are there in the banking sector also, uh, as I said. So we can um, uh, have a very fruitful products and uh, according to the individual uh, MSME requirements, we have a design products. Even rightly our comments are said now, uh, we are working on uh, uh, exclusive product for the only the uh, defense corridor and which are the uh, MSME units are supplying to the uh, defense. For them an exclusive products designing is going on right now. Probably uh, it will be uh, available for the in the month or two. This was the, our expectations. Anything other, uh, any other specific requirements or specific questions are there and uh, it's welcome. You can ask me. It's a common phenomenon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for enlightening us on the ease of business with the banks. Uh, we would expect uh, some more uh, offers that are being cooked now uh, to be released sh uh, shortly. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, the uh, address by uh, Vice Chancellor Dr. S. Uh, 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 Velusami. Uh, he'll be talking about. Uh, I mean, uh, having heard all the complete uh, lecture, you it was ki kind of him. Normally, we have his address in the beginning, but he would chose to uh, sit through the whole thing, listen to it, and then talk. It was uh, very nice and thoughtful, sir. Thank you. May I have the stage, please? Very good <coughs> noon to all of you. Anyway, it's almost uh, the lunch time. Anyhow, I'll quickly uh, <coughs> just finish it. Uh, anyhow, the, the most uh, respected experts uh, from uh, various uh, uh, defense sector, uh, like uh, Indian Army Design Bureau, Indian Army Director of uh, Indianization, Indian Navy uh, Center for Indianization and Self-Reliance, Indian Air Force uh, Base <coughs> Repair Depot, and uh, industry representatives, Finance Chamber partner and uh, beloved participants of uh, seminar uh, belongs to <coughs> MSMEs and startups, Industrial and Commerce Association of uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, <coughs> uh, Industrial Corridor, the Defense Industrial Corridor, Academia, faculty, staff, and students of various colleges in Trichy and Tanjavur region, and also of the Yermani Institute of Science and Technology. And uh, uh, actually the, the brain behind uh, this program, I think so, yes, delivered the inaugural address before I come rather uh, on this occasion. Beloved Wheaton Wing Commander, uh, uh, Mr. M. Jayakumar sir, and Mrs. Uh, Jayakumar. <laughs> and uh, uh, beloved Wheaton uh, Colonel, in uh, Salo Kumar, uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer, a defense project, uh, Bridge uh, uh, Bharat uh, uh, Council, and uh, who will be delivering a uh, vote of thanks. And my uh, colleague of uh, Periyar, uh, Technology Business Incubator, uh, Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Aruna Madam, and uh, Director for Center of Excellence, uh, Training and Development, uh, Mr. Rakesh, and uh, <coughs> Dean Research, uh, Dr. Kumran Sar, and uh, other uh, staff members, uh, and invited guests, uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to be with you and uh, participate uh, in this uh, <coughs> inaugural function of uh, the seminar on collaborative research and development, cooperative production and defense sector, uh, jointly organized by Bridge Bharat uh, Council for Promotion of Innovation, Research and Entrepreneurship, and uh, Periyar uh, TBI, and uh, <coughs> Center of Excellence of Training and uh, uh, Development uh, of Periyar Manami Institute of Science and Technology. 
uh, on this uh, happiest occasion uh, on behalf of the uh, uh, Chancellor of our Institute and Periyarame Institute of Science and Technology and my own behalf, I convey our heartiest greetings and best wishes uh, to all of you. Uh, first of all, uh, I should not forget to congratulate the organizing uh, committee of uh, this seminar, especially a uh, written uh, wing commander, uh, M. J. Kumar. Uh, without his effort, uh, I think so it won't be possible. Uh, and also the Periyar TBI CEO, M. S. Aruna Madam, and uh, Director for CDAT, uh, Mr. Rakesh, and others for their excellent uh, cooperation and organization of uh, this event. <coughs> I'm very uh, glad to know that uh, this is the first ever seminar uh, that brings together the Indian Armed Forces, Industries, Academia in Tamil Nadu uh, Defense Industrial Corridor uh, to bridge the gap between policy initiatives, uh, <coughs> user needs and capabilities of industry and academia to promote a self-reliance in defense sector. Uh, <coughs> Uh, so uh, I congratulate the Witten uh, Wing Commander, uh, Jay Kumar, uh, for this initiative. Uh, the, the initiative should continue. It's a good beginning, uh, so it should continue uh, <coughs> ever. Uh, many thanks for inviting me to uh, uh, this uh, uh, event uh, uh, to give a keynote address. Uh, uh, I doubt very much uh, I'm suitable to stand before you uh, mainly the defense people who are standing here. Uh, I feel proud one way that, you know, uh, uh, we are, uh, the Periyar Manima Institute is the first uh, made the Make in India under project, what you call poems. Uh, actually, uh, if the poem is a project, uh, actually, the, uh, we normally, the, uh, <coughs> we have produced uh, continuous product for defense and also got OME, the, the, uh, uh, OEM, uh, Original uh, Equipment Manufacturing License, uh, well, uh, our institute uh, uh, actually uh, uh, we got it, uh, so we feel that proud. Uh, a poem is a pneumatically operated electronic uh, multipurpose simulator, uh, probably, uh, uh, I mean people will just explain to you later. Uh, so because of uh, that uh, probably uh, I am suitable as a vice chancellor of the institute. I am a right person uh, to give a keynote address. Uh, <coughs> and not only that, uh, our institute also is producing a number of graduates and uh, we are also training through NCC and uh, we are encouraging them to join defense sector. So that is also another reason. And uh, another thing is I am happy to say that I am a son of an uh, ex-serviceman uh, <coughs> who worked in Indian Army uh, during Second World War. And uh, he was uh, actually uh, in uh, invent infantry uh, team and served in Burma and Rangoon border in the Second World War. Uh, he narrated uh, actually one incident, just I will share with you. Uh, so I am also happy. Uh, uh, <coughs> so the incident is, uh, uh, so he escaped from uh, death during war, actual war he involved. Actually one fine evening uh, about the sunset, uh, normally there is a messenger or the informer in normally where will people will be there. They will uh, came and uh, informed that this camp, the, this camp that uh, so Japanese uh, <coughs> camp is nearby. They are digging trench, they are going to stay tonight. So they understood that there will be a fight tonight. Uh, so they also digged the uh, trench, all that. Uh, they say the soil was very hard, they are not able to dig deep, all that. My father was telling all that. But somehow uh, they managed and uh, finished the dinner, then uh, settled in the, uh, actually uh, uh, in the trench. Then the midnight, one o'clock, uh, the fight started, what he said rather. And uh, he th thought that is out, <laughs> life is out. Uh, he was uh, narrating to us. And uh, the finally, uh, uh, nobody died in their team. Morning got up around five o'clock and saw that only the Japanese, number of Japanese soldiers died rather. Uh, 
So uh, this is an incident, just want to tell you rather. Uh, that we know that uh, how the defense people uh, uh, actually uh, <coughs> uh, dedicating their life for, uh, you mean, for protecting the institute, uh, mainly the, uh, our country rather. So the one way I'm happy that uh, even I have also attended a permanent commission, you know, army and also the commission, they said, uh, you have other job, just go ahead. <laughs> That's the reason I'm standing before you today. I am happy rather. So I'm extremely very happy uh, to be standing before you uh, 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 to just to give a keynote address. <coughs> uh, so actually, uh, uh, the self-reliance and defense, you are talking about that, you know, uh, generally uh, everyone who want to be uh, self-reliant, uh, uh, I hope that uh, even the, uh, the Sulu, uh, uh, Pipin Ravat uh, has uh, actually we went an accident, and the, the, uh, <coughs> the helicopter crashed, uh, that helicopter is made by Russia, uh, I hope that, uh, I, I thought I'm correct, I hope that, uh, uh, made by Russia. You, uh, sometimes it would have been an indigenous helicopter, that sort of accident would not have happened. Why I'm telling you all that? They repair all that, you know, we have to depend on uh, the, uh, <coughs> the Russian people, mm -hmm. whatever the guidance, all that. But we really made uh, such type of uh, aircraft, sorry, <coughs> Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, uh, helicopter, uh, so probably the, the repair and maintenance we would have done is better, I hope rather. I'm not telling you rather, I'm not creating new problem. <laughs> the all repair and maintenance would have done very well. Most, most of you also in Sulur. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm thinking that the indigenous uh, nation is there, uh, definitely uh, uh, sometimes this would not have happened, uh, we hope rather. Uh, <coughs> so uh, I, I hope that, uh, uh, you know, the self-sufficiency in defense will be the single most important fundamental of uh, strategic uh, independence. The continuous industry would assume significance in the days to come, not only to meet the requirements of Bharat, but also to export. Uh, since its independence, India has pursued its self-reliance, yet efforts have resulted in dismal outcomes. India built up its domestic defense protection facilities with the help of countries like the farmer. USSR and the British in the 1960s and 1970s, primarily for the assemblage and the license. Uh, the call of uh, Atman Nir Nirbar Bharat has provided further impetus uh, to realize the goal of self-reliance. Um, <coughs> Atman Nirbar uh, Bharat is the vision of the, the Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, only on, on 12th May 2020, the special economic and comprehensive package of Indian rupees 20 lakh crores, roughly equivalent to 10% of uh, India's GDP, was made available to make India self-reliant and meet the challenges thrown by COVID-19. Atma <coughs> uh, Nirbar Bharat, a five plus or economy, infrastructure, system, vibrant demography and demand. When India speaks be, uh, of becoming self-sustaining, does not promote a self-centered system. Instead, India is concerned about the happiness, cooperation, peace of the world community. The defense sector was uh, identified as an important area with the many opportunities for self-reliance because it is one of the critical sector of the Indian economy. It has the potential for tremendous growth because of the large, talented pool of skill sets in human resources and large-scale modernization requirements of the Indian armed forces. The defense sector would further strengthen the economy by generating uh, employment opportunities uh, and saving the exchequer by reducing the important burden. The size of the defense industry, including the aerospace and naval shipbuilding industry, was estimated at uh, 85,000 crores 2020-21. While the contribution of the public sector is estimated to be 68,000 crores, the share of the private sector has steadily grown to more than 17,000 crores in recent years. The, the government has uh, initiated a various policy actions to boost indigenous design, development, and manufacture of defense equipment in the country and to make a, <coughs> a sustainable defense industrial ecosystem. One of the steps uh, to obtain capital goods from the indigenous market through the revised <coughs> defense acquisition procedure, DAP 2020, 
the announcement of two positive indigenization list of 2000 sorry 209 items of goods and services and one positive indigenization list of total of 2851 de defense public sector undertaking import of th uh, these items has been restricted simplification of the industrial licensing process with a more extended vali <coughs> validity period increasing of foreign direct investment policy allowing 75 percent fta and automatic route and 100 percent through approval of the government launching innovations of defense excellence a scheme involving startups and micro small and medium enterprises execution of public procurement uh, order 2017 launch of an uh, indigenization portal like sri gen to promote make in india by indian industry together with smmes restructuring of <coughs> offset policy with a thirst on attracting investment and transfer of technology to defense manufacturing by assign assigning higher multipliers creating dedicated uh, two defense industrial corridors one in up and the other in tamil nadu uh, <coughs> to further advance the strengths and the abilities of our indian armed forces the capital outlay for the defense sector in the annual budget of 22 uh, 2022 23 was increased by 12.82 percent from the previous year to reduce uh, to reduce import um, uh, okay um, uh, okay to reduce the uh, uh, import uh, uh, dependence on modernize our forces with our home grown technology the government has gradually increased the domestic industries capital procurement budget and for the year 2023 it is about 68 percent this would be undoubtedly open various opportunities for the domestic sector moreover modernization requirements and the design and production ecosystem <coughs> and further r d and technological development are fundamental to defense self-reliance for realizing the target turnover of rupees 1 lakh uh, 75 000 crore together with an uh, export of rupees 000, 35 000 crore in defense sector by 2025 would not be possible without the thirst on innovation and R&D. The concept of Arthur uh, Nirbharat in defense should not be limited only to protection. It uh, also to encompass the domination of uh, evolving homegrown capabilities in providing new technologies and making design leadership among industry, startups, and academia. Trial and testing of the goods and services, another critical factor for R&D and in defense sector it is an initial phase. Uh, actually, the key aspect that impact of promoting defense industry are the delays in trials and testing process, non-availability of proof stock components, and non-accessibility to the test amenities in one place, leading to augmented transportation costs because of a limited number of ranges and long waiting uh, <coughs> in the Indian armed forces. It's uh, immediate neighborhoods, continuous threat, also people to desire to modernize. The persistent classes over unsettled boundary disputes with China and Pakistan, terrorism in some, uh, Jammu and Kashmir, injustice in the northeastern states, the uncontrolled menace of left-wing extremism, and the rising challenges from urban terrorism have further complicated India's security environment. To fight a modern day war, it must have modern day weapons. India must uh, uh, stand up uh, to the world uh, because, of, uh, because uh, I believe that unless India stands up to the world, no one will respect us. Only strength respects strength. We must be strong not only as a military power but also an economic power. India always respects the freedom of others. We should also promote peace in the world. In, if there is a war, probably you can understand, there will be a war that will become a cyber war, a bio war or nuclear war, which will destroy the whole world, which will result into unfit to live in the, uh, in the, in the planet, rather, I could say. Hence, we all always work together provide peace to bring prosperity in the world technology technology to be uh, for used for, used to for constructive purpose and not for destructive purpose so we normally face number of uh, uh, challenges uh, mainly uh, uh, natural calamities 
like uh, epidemic and so on. There so many things are there to fight, not fight with uh, neighboring people rather. And uh, <coughs> I hope uh, we, the Periyar Mane Main Institute also join with you. Uh, the reason is our motto is uh, a thing, uh, innovate and transform. So whatever innovation, definitely our young students are here, they, they will definitely, uh, they will contribute. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, not only that, you know, uh, uh, we are also in, uh, having an uh, education system, what you call uh, uh, outcome-based education. Outcome-based ba ba education is follows a uh, Bloom's taxonomy, probably some of you are aware that actually. <coughs> so not only uh, you have to, uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, thinking alone is not sufficient, you have to have a remembering capability and applying capability and analyzing capability and evaluating capability, uh, 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 evaluating capability and creating capability. The creation result innovation. I hope the innovation is the order of the day. And uh, our teaching, our education policy also, and uh, education 4.0, uh, meet the industrial revolution, you know, 4.0, uh, 5.0. Education also we are modifying it uh, to meet the uh, the, uh, the technological challenges and uh, not only that you know we talk about all everything in a smartphone or smart city or smart traffic a uh, smart technology is embedded with everything rather so we are also teaching uh, our old students uh, with uh, smart technologies so our you mean our university also so slowly you know probably the pandemic would have taught you know we should uh, <coughs> face any situation we we, we should uh, do our activities you know, now uh, working at a home, we are not thought about it in the past. So everything is it's possible rather. These are all challenges. Definitely we will in the battle. Uh, so <coughs> I am very happy that, uh, you know, the learned people from defense sector, it, it's a new uh, audience, uh, may, or may new, new representatives, uh, uh, you know, new program. Uh, if I, he said it's the first program. It's a new crowd for mainly. Uh, I think so, the students, uh, I am very, very happy that uh, you are the future pillar of our nation. You are the people make uh, as uh, the, the dream of Abdul Kalam, you know, uh, make uh, the superpower and India is a superpower. Unless otherwise, as I said, if we are not strong, nobody will respect. So you have to strengthen uh, not only the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Indian defense, you have to strengthen the India and make uh, the India proud. Uh, that is what uh, the success of uh, this uh, event, uh, that's what I, you know, the, uh, the youngsters, some of you, you come forward to contribute to the society in an in innovative way uh, to transform uh, technology. Uh, that is the great success of the event, what I feel. So with this, uh, I request, uh, uh, actually, uh, Jay Kumar and uh, the Madam Aruna and others, to jointly uh, just work together. Anything is there, you know, our university is uh, willing to participate and collaborate with you and whatever help you want, we definitely do that. Uh, I assure you on this platform, sir, and you have to continue this program in this future also. The students also, you know, uh, don't waste your valuable time. Always, you, you know, how our forefathers actually work hard and built the nation. So you should have a national spirit so unless otherwise you have a national spirit and, and also service mind. The, our uh, institute is actually built by uh, the service minded person of uh, the Tandai Periyar, Amani Amayar and followed by our Asriya rather. So we should have a service mentality. Unless otherwise you have service mentality, then you will be totally, your life will be spoiled rather. So you are serving, not only that, the serving to the a country, you are serving uh, your, your own society, indirectly you are serving your own family uh, you were, uh, and your own group rather, and uh, finally you are the people serving yourself. So that the, the self-service, you are achieving it uh, by even everything, you know. Uh, we, we can ex excel if we really have a self-discipline. Uh, that is much why even Tandai Periyar used to say that, yeah, discipline is much, much important. Even work discipline or whatever may be. So that uh, discipline uh, culture in every walk of life, if you do it, you can come up in life. A discipline is there, education will come automatically, or <coughs> research will come automatically, work culture will come automatically. You'll serve definitely 
the India and make the India proud. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for coming to the institute. So we are very, uh, we are always ready to welcome at any time. Whenever you come, you can walk in. You can freely talk to with us. So we are ready to help with you. So thank you very much for giving the valuable opportunity. All the best. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your uh, deep-rooted uh, thought process. Uh, we will take forward and uh, all that you had suggested to us. Uh, the students may now leave for lunch. We'll have the question and answer uh, shortly. Um, uh, we'll have uh, the panel discussion and the uh, facilitation in the afternoon. Uh, hope Colonel Gardge and uh, Commodore are online. They're showing online, no? Yes, sir. We are here. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, it's been a long you. wait for you. Uh, we'll. Uh, I think I, I, you have also gone through whatever uh, talks, like uh, I didn't want the questions to be repeated over each speaker because more or less uh, one, the, uh, one would have got clarified through the, all these lectures, uh, series of lectures I'd say. So I'll just uh, put for the uh, audience for any question answers right now. If we have any, uh, we'll take it forward. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we are open to question and answers. Uh, all the uh, uh, speakers are available. So if you have any questions, we, will, uh, we can uh, go through it right now. Uh, to all the speakers on Zoom, in fact, I request them to visit Trichy. We'll just uh, uh, showcase our uh, capabilities so that I, by name we may not be able to know about the product uh, and uh, what are the process involved. If they go through the uh, our facilities available, they can suggest us the product which can be taken up by us. Uh, we will facilitate that sir. Uh, this is the first time uh, where we are having an online meet. Uh, the next one uh, we are planning uh, shortly a larger gathering and a physical meeting. We will have the uh, sharing of uh, our expertise knowledge and uh, whatever is the requirement, we'll have a uh, uh, one-on-one -on -one talk whenever they come. So we uh, this uh, we already like uh, taken up uh, through the Army Technology Node, which has newly been created at Chennai. Uh, they will be uh, facilitating us to conduct this in a much larger scale. The demand has already been placed on us. We are working on that. Uh, anybody else? Okay, sir. Uh, generally, uh, Myself, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Minute, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, in the institution, what I am expecting is, so whatever you want it in which area you want uh, expertise or <coughs> anything we have to do it, you just if you, sometimes you come and inform me well in advance, we will equip our students and staff in that particular line, <coughs> so that uh, you will be useful to you. And uh, if sometimes, you know, you, you bring a problem, we need a solution quickly, all that. Uh, sometimes it may not be a uh, uh, little bit possible. If anything is really wanted, sir, we will definitely have a, a good foundation and we'll definitely solve the problem. For that, we have Periyar TBI is always there. We have wing Petas, all that. They, they will have a support. Uh, <coughs> so uh, in whatever either army problem or naval problem or air force problem or uh, small scale industry, anything, any product manufacturing, all that, if they come and inform and uh, we will just equip the student and allow, allow them to do carry on. Uh, equip our own staff member. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thanks a lot for the offer, sir. We definitely do look forward to your uh, expert guidance in uh, reaching out to the defense requirements. So VC have answered my question, even though I have to put, reframe the question once again. Nada and Nada Valam Tham Nada. When we defend our uh, nation by ourselves, that is a country. 
திருவள்ளுவர் சேட் அறிவு அழிவிலிருந்து காக்கும் கருவி இந்த அறிவை நம்ம வந்து வீசிட்டு வந்து எக்ஸ்பெக்ட் பண்ணுறோம் ஆர்மி டிஃபைன் பண்ணுறத நமக்கு புரிகிற மாதிரி நம்ம வீசி மாதிரி இருக்கிறவங்களால நமக்கு எளிமையாக டிஃபைன் பண்ண முடியும் இந்த டெஃபினேஷன் இருந்துருச்சுன்னா செய்கிறதுக்கும் தேவைக்கும் உண்டான கேப் ஃபுல்லுமே குறைஞ்சிடும் செய்கிறதுக்கும் தேவைக்கும் உண்டான கேப் குறைஞ்சிடும் நம்ம வந்து வீசி வீசி மாதிரி இருக்கவங்கள ஃபுல்லாக டிபெண்ட் பண்ணி இருக்கோம் அவங்க வந்து இந்த தே ஹவ் டு டிஃபைனஸ் வேரியஸ் இப்போ டுவெண்ட்டி தௌ டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் தௌசண்ட் ப்ராடக்ட் சார் செட் ஃப்ரம் குவாலிட்டி தே ஹவ் நேம்ட் இட் அண்ட் விச் ஆர் வி ஆர் இம்போர்ட்டிங் தோஸ் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் கேன் பி டிஃபைன்ட் வித் வேரியஸ் டைமென்ஷன் அண்ட் வித் தியர் குவாலிட்டி திஸ் கேன் பி ஈஸிலி டிஃபைன் பை த அகடமிக் சைட் அண்ட் வி கேன் மேனுஃபேக்சர் இட் ஆர் சோர்ஸ் இட் ஃப்ரம் வேர் எவர் இட்ஸ் அவைலபிள் இண்டிஜினியஸ்லி தேங்க் யூ Okay. Thank you for Thank the support, you. the VC. Thank you. Uh, both the uh, defense officials are waiting uh, for your questions. In case you have anything uh, to be directed to them, it will be uh, good. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Tamura Bala here, sir, from CIS or Coimbatore. Can all of you hear me, sir? Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Uh, I'll answer for both the questions that have been come up from this, uh, our industry partners from uh, Trichy and the Tanjore area. Yes, sir. I'll answer both in English as well as our uh, beloved uh, person has asked me to be the bridge and answer both. First is we are uh, already planning to visit uh, Trichy, Tanjore area and the treats uh, available at uh, Trichy to interact with all the uh, firms and the partners in development of uh, our indigenous uh, endeavor. Second, coming to the other uh, uh, The person he has asked about uh, being the bridge, uh, he has requested the VC. Uh, sir, okay, I am going to be a part of Coimbatore uh, to make it as a bridge between the people of uh, local populace and the uh, Navy. That's why I am going to select the one of the issues that I am going to be a part of the director and interact with the director. அந்த இனிபிஷன்ஸ் அதாவது உங்களுக்கு உங்க மனசுல இருக்கிற சில இதெல்லாம் டவுட்ஸ் எல்லாம் போக்கிறதுக்கு தான் இங்க போட்டிருக்காங்க என்ன நாங்க திருச்சிக்கும் தஞ்சாவூருக்கு வரும்போது உங்ககிட்ட என்னென்ன எங்களுக்கு வேண்டியது இருக்கு உங்களுக்கு என்ன டிஃபிகல்டிஸ் கஷ்டம் இருக்கு இது நேவியோடைய நேவியோட இம்பாக்ட் பண்ணும்போது அது எல்லாத்தையும் நான் ஷார்ட் அவுட் பண்றேன் உங்களுக்கு நல்லா புரியற மாதிரி என்னென்னலாம் செய்ய முடியுமோ அது எல்லாமே என்னால செய்ய முடியும் நான் இங்கிருந்து தான் போயிருக்கேன் நான் கடலூர்ல இருந்து தான் போயிருக்கேன் என்னுடைய ஸ்கூல் வந்து கடலூர்ல நான் படித்தேன் ஓகே அதுக்கப்புறம் காலேஜ் வந்து சென்னையில் அது என்னுடைய பயோடேட்டா ரீட் பண்ணும்போது உங்களுக்கு புரிஞ்சிருக்கும் நான் ஃபுல் அண்ட் ஃபுல் உங்கள் ஏரியாவில இருந்து தான் வந்திருக்கேன் உங்களுக்கு என்ன தேவையோ எல்லா டவுட்ஸையும் என்னால் கிளியர் பண்ண முடியும் நாங்கள் உங்களுக்கு விசிட் பண்ணுவோம் தேங்க் யூ தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் யுவர் என்கரேஜிங் ரிப்ளை சார் Now, I am from uh, Govind Raja from PR Acoustics Trichy, Thuvakudi Industrial Estate. We want the list of products to be indigenized. I am attending the third meeting. Until today, I couldn't get the details. If any website is available, please give it to us or to Mr. Kanaga Sabapati. We can go through that and come with your ideas. Thank you very much. Uh, can I answer, sir? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Uh, during my presentations, I already uh, put the two or three slides where uh, the web addresses and all have been uh, shown. That gives a complete list of uh, Navy's requirements as well as uh, MOD's requirements that includes yeah. Army, Navy and the Air Force. Yeah, that the is right, sir. Uh, that is uh, acknowledged. Uh, he just wants to see it. We are just uh, trying to show the website. So, uh, uh, do you want me to share once again, sir? I am ready to do that one now. The, the links are available, sir. Uh, like, what is the content of the link? He just uh, will just uh, display to him locally. Sure. In case if you want, I can again uh, share those uh, three, four slides. Otherwise, if it is already available with you, that can be shared with. Uh, uh, what does you want, sir? You can uh, share it to me on my number. I will sure. then distribute uh, the list to these uh, people, sir. 
observe we will do that so that will be uh, preferable thank you sir. i am mainly general fabrications heavy metal fabrications yeah yeah பாதி ஸ்கிரீன் தான் தெரியுது Uh, what, what I'll do is I'll get the list, uh, the links, and I'll uh, take out the uh, list of the components. I'll share it with the key people, which can be given to all. Is it? No, that is true, but it is you are hitting on the white uh, ladichamari. It's lunch time. We we can show it to him so, uh, in person. Uh, yeah. Uh, any other questions, please? Yep. Uh, can you uh, get the mic? Yeah. Sir, uh, since uh, Neva was saying, you know, this Bofors howitzer guns yeah. has been in the talk. You know, the thing is, when we have, you know, the, the performance of the gun has been basically, I, to my knowledge, they said it's one of the best performing field guns. Mm -hmm. My request is that, you know, we have got companies like Bofors howitzer. Now you want these to be indigenized. Why not we ask these kind of companies who have the technologies to have an individual Indian partner with whom they can uh, you know, collaborate and manufacture here itself? Yeah. Uh, can I this could be addressed by Mr. Gadge or. Can, can I have Colonel Gadge answering that question, please? Sir, uh, the JVs can be undertaken by any firm with the company, sir, but the company should be willing to undertake those JVs here in India. Now, JVs have got their own uh, pros and cons. Like uh, the firm which I know, the JV is there is the uh, PLR system which has got JV along with the Israeli firms. So they are manufacturing some items here which are then supplied all over the world, in fact. So JV is altogether a uh, different subject wherein the industry uh, as well as the firm. They, they will get involved. So till such time the JV doesn't form, uh, the items are uh, uh, remains ex import and that's where we pitch in. So it's basically outside the scope of Directorate of Indianization. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just uh, support uh, Kalan Gage. Uh, Bofors, uh, as you're suggesting, is a feasibility, but uh, what currently being done is the uh, it is uh, components, subsystems, system level, uh, indigenization that has already been done. Uh, Bofors, I can uh, confidently say about uh, 70 to 80 percent of the items have already been indigenized by DOI. Uh, yes. Now, uh, taking it forward as a, a complete production here, uh, at this stage it may not be advantageous because it uh, more or less will come. The current policy is when an item is being imported, uh, we are going for offset. That is when we get the equipment itself, 60 percent is uh, ex-import and 40 percent to be made in India by an Indi Indian company in collaboration. So the, at that stage, it is uh, uh, very much beneficial. But at this stage, like as far as uh, Bofors is concerned, it's already quite delayed, and we have already uh, independently done so much of uh, indigenization. So uh, yeah, for a newer one, we should take that, which is already in no, progress. My only thing is that you know, DOI can act as a facilitator to enable these vendors you know, to do this kind of a jobs. You know, that is also rather than supplying all no, we are defense. Yeah, we they are, are already uh, looking into uh, systems and even uh, actually they've uh, gone in for complete, uh, uh, in fact, it is one of the biggest projects as far as DOI is concerned, wherein the complete repowering uh, in the, and the transmission system and engines, everything of BMPs has been taken up as a uh, major uh, project. So similar systems are feasible. Your suggestion is valid. Yeah.
So uh, one more small question. This uh, Navy, they have shared their contact address, csr.cb at gmail.com. Like that, you know, I request this uh, Army and uh, 5BR to st share their contact details so that, you know, if we require anything to be coming. Yeah, it's already available with us uh, in yeah. case uh, there uh, we can uh, share it with you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, anybody else, please? Any other uh, questions? Any other suggestions? Sir, you can share the PowerPoint uh, presentations. Uh, so PowerPoint presentation, I'll take the uh, clearance in case they are able to give us. So most of the slides were not visible from here. Okay, sir. Uh, will it be feasible, sir, Commodore and uh, Colonel Gagde? Is it possible uh, to share the uh, slides presentation or is it uh, confidential? Right, right. No, sir. It's not confidential, but the MI clearance is only for giving a presentation. Giving sir. a so presentation. Right. Uh, the only the uh, uh, slide in which the contacts or the links Contact, have been given, yes. that is that open source. Be. You can kindly share that. We will make it available to the participants. Sir. Uh, uh, sir, answering your questions, the clearance they will have to take for the sharing the uh, presentation as such. I will get you the in, uh, necessary inputs for your further confirmation. Anybody else, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, the speakers of today from the defense side is uh, uh, able to answer me because now a lot of things are happening in the startup and innovation system and more academics and uh, upcoming startups are into the uh, mainstream of productions. Uh, still the defense uh, ministry is ha having the same set of rules. Uh, sorry to interview ma'am. If you explain, I mean, uh, introduce yourself, they will be able to catch oh, the sorry. <laughs> Um, for the speakers from the defense uh, sectors, I am Dr. Aruna, heading the business incubator in the host institute today, uh, Pariyam Institute of Science and Technology. And we are happy to uh, state that we are one of the first few Make in India projects for the defense uh, by means of supplying training simulators for Indian Air Force. Uh, we got the contract signed and we are um, almost uh, completing 50% of the first simulator to be supplied by uh, September. We are expecting the induction by September. Uh, with that experience, uh, I have some suggestions and observations uh, uh, to be posted to the Defense Ministry so that more academics and uh, startups like us will coming forward to uh, uh, solve the uh, uh, import problems. Now, when we talk about Indi Indi indigenization, uh, most of the research and concepts are coming from the academic brains, uh, be it faculty or students. Uh, so when we move forward, uh, for example, the university now backed the contract. So we are also you know, being asked to face the same process. Like uh, uh, when we signed the contract, we have been asked to give the bank guarantee. And, uh, so literally for bagging a 10 crore project, uh, we have locked uh, uh, 1 crore rupees from the uh, uh, university. University it thrives only on the uh, fees collected from the students. And locking such a great amount, big amount, uh, for fulfilling the contract is going to be very difficult for us. Uh, so there should be some kind of mechanism uh, from the defense side to uh, liberate some of such kind of bottlenecks, even for the startups for, uh, for that. So whenever you talk about indigenization and new product development for the defense, they should not be treated like a typical vendor. For okay. defense vendors, maybe like Rafael or Bofors or uh, even whatever, uh, no, I, I forgot uh, big names. So we cannot be treated on par with those kind of vendors, especially when it involves some financial uh, commitments or requirements. Whatever. I'm just registering the uh, input here. I, we are not expecting any answer uh, to be given by the okay. um, speakers. Thank you. Uh, uh, anybody who wants to comment on it, either Kabodar or Dawkaral? Uh, sir, here, uh, Commodore Bala here, sir, from Kandito, CSR. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. I just noted your point. Uh, during the presentations, I brought out uh, the various schemes available, including Make 1, 2, and 3. And also, there is a provision of a TDS, Technology Development Fund. All these things are actually meant to circumvent uh, whatever uh, the difficulties are, the bottlenecks, what you told to come out. And also, when you are developing an item, there is something called a development portion, and after that is called the product portion. The development fund caters for all your needs and your requirements when you are incubating or developing or prototyping or you are doing failure analysis on all those things. 
all the things will be catered in the development fund itself then comes the production now the moment you are uh, putting your price tag and other things for development or uh, for the production thing which are already catered for uh, whatever uh, you call it as a bag or it is we are basically going as per the dpm and the dpp procedures yes there is a provision available okay we will look into that one no? we will just get back to Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, what she was uh, asking is regarding one uh, live project which has already been given. Uh, this probably, uh, as uh, I also appreciate that uh, we uh, we are not in a position to give an answer. But when you get an opportunity to interact with uh, suitable authorities, this point may be projected. Uh, sir, uh, I am Colonel Dhanesh Khadge. Yes, sir. I would just like to add on, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, please. Sir, uh, recently we have taken up one uh, R&D project with IIT Delhi, sir. Wherein we in we have exploited the provisions of the DFPDS 21, which is the new DFPDS, to take R&D projects with academia without having the clauses of uh, the EMD or the performance bank guarantees. But these are limited only, like uh, Commodore. Uh, Bala Sundaram has already said these are limited only up to the R and D and the first prototype. Once it goes into the production stage, then the normal procurement policies do apply. Uh, so uh, there is a possibility of going into the R and D without uh, the EMD or the PBG to be submitted by the academic institutions. Yeah, thank you, Gadge. Uh, that uh, phase is uh, well taken. We will talk about it and uh, let's see. The, my request is uh, when you are interacting with any such officials wherein the policies, uh, nowadays the trend is uh, the uh, government is readily slashing any difficulty which is available for the industry. Uh, any constraints are being removed. So this can also be put up as a point uh, because many other industries are finding that uh, paying EMD, uh, sorry not EMD, EMD is exempted, they are paying the bank guarantee is a big uh, drain on them. I mean, uh, that is a kind of uh, thing which is there. Where already it has been uh, brought down from 10% to 3%. What else? Uh, unless we ask for it, we will not get it. So you may like to pro project it accordingly. Thank you. Any other points, please? Yeah, please give the mic to uh, Technical development funds. Uh, they informed that 90% we can get it, but... More details, what is the maximum amount? Uh, about that uh, TDF, sir? Yes, yes. TDF. Uh, TDF is a project which is coming uh, through the DRDO. You can be funded up to 90%, 10% by, to be borne by the manufacturer. And uh, this uh, Defense Excellence Funds. IDEX. Yes, sir. I IDEX. Uh, IDEX okay. and uh, the challenges. Uh, is, there any, is there any ceiling? Yes, sir. 1.5 crores is the maximum for IDEX projects. And uh, t uh, for uh, TDF, it is 10 crores. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. You, are right, you are right, sir. What you told is right. And it has a time caveat also, two years ago. I will uh, discuss with you, sir. Doing lunch time, okay. okay. Uh, what is the upper limit now for IDEX? Same, sir. Amount is 1.5 crores. So 1.5, normal. 5-0. Mm. Uh, there is no category in that. All are uh, up to 50? No, maximum 50. Uh, like, no categories like prime or other thing. Okay. Uh, last time when I was attending a webinar uh, uh, headed by the DRDO, they were saying that uh, MSME and startups will be given a preference for up to so up to 50 crores, how will a startup be managing the fund? Okay, and out of that 10% is still to be paid by the company? Okay. Right, uh, that uh, we can update our knowledge. Uh, TDF is last week, okay, right. Uh, thank you for informing. Uh, now TDF is instead of uh, 10 crores, upper limit is up to 50 crores and uh, IDEX has got uh, two categories, normal and prime. Normal is 1.5 and prime is up to 10 crores. So in this, you have to submit your ideas. Uh, they will evaluate your ideas and uh, find out if it is feasible to be taken up uh, in, in favor of defense requirements. 
if that be you'll be awarded that uh, amount yes Right. Yeah. Uh, you can you can speak to Dr. Vardaraj and I think he. Eh? Ma'am, ma uh, we have the panel discussion. You both are part of it. We will trash it out. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Uh, Dr. Vardaraj, please let's utilize them. Uh, sorry, any other questions for the uh, uh, online attendees, please? Yeah. Hello. Uh, so this is Sham Sundar from Meena Fiberglass Industries, and we are uh, manufacturing fiberglass products. And we face certain practical difficulties while placing the order through gym portal or uh, uh, in the OFB portal. So once when I try to uh, enter a uh, tender in gym portal, they ask for a, a product uh, certification from uh, uh, in OFP portal but when I try to pay for uh, pay in that OFP portal uh, the money is uh, revet, uh, getting reverted back to our account uh, again and again and I tried for more than six or seven times so that uh, we, we uh, our uh, bid is not even taken for technical bid in that tender okay uh, can you answer that question you are a gem expert Uh, he's uh, talking about something recently, two months back. Uh, uh, either of you could contribute anything And they are asked for uh, a product certification from uh, in the OFB portal. Uh, the tenor has been called by Indian Optical. You mean the OEM's uh, manufacturer authorization? No, sir, OFB portal. Okay, exactly, I couldn't get you. Ordinance uh, factory board. Okay, okay. They, they have the, their own portal. Yeah, and in, in the gym. Uh, 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 just a minute, please. Uh, you both can take it on uh, subsequently. Yeah. Yeah. In case anything, uh, uh, the commodore colonel wants to share, we will take it now on this. Yes, from our side. So EMD uh, is, uh, in case you are registered with, with the small scale industries or any uh, MSME, you do not uh, require, you uh, come under exemption category for EMD. Udem, MSME certificate, that is enough. Uh, any other question, please? Right? Yeah, uh, no more questions. Uh, uh, there, there seems to be no more questions. Uh, probably uh, any other thing you want to share, you can uh, share based on the uh, thought process. I'm uh, grateful to uh, uh, the uh, Colonel Gardge and uh, Commodore uh, Balasubramaniam for having come on uh, and spent the entire day with us. It is the uh, first of its kind. Uh, in Tamil Nadu, wherein we had the people uh, from the defense in uniform, in chair, where they are doing the indigenization or actually the, the procurement agencies coming and talking to the academia and the industries put together. So it gives us a, a great uh, kind of uh, transparency amongst us and this is uh, phase one of bridging. So just a beginning, we will take it uh, forward uh, together. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. And uh, I also take this opportunity to thank uh, all the other speakers who are uh, here uh, uh, and especially the Vice Chancellor who took uh, his entire day off to sit with us and it's a very encouraging and uh, really a progressive uh, one. And uh, the industrialists uh, 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 for sharing their thought process and, uh, uh, and the finance uh, for giving us that uh, small talk. I also thank uh, for having facilitated this uh, particular meeting. So uh, thank you all for being here and uh, uh, very uh, educative and informative talk it was. Uh, in the afternoon we have a discussion uh, panel wherein uh, we will be addressing all these questions that were coming up in mind 
uh, we will have re uh, industry reps, uh, the academia rep, and the defense reps uh, who will be sitting uh, uh, together and trying to bridge this gap. Mm -hmm. So, whatever questions, let's tackle it in that. Uh, so, uh, we can now break for lunch. And I thank you once again, uh, uh, Colonel Gadge and Komodo, for being with us. I hope uh, we, uh, we, our uh, participants had learned a lot from you. We will have continued associations and uh, we will get back to you very shortly with uh, uh, bridging the industries with you so that we can have a meaningful development of products from Tamil Nadu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, organizers, the Bridge Goddess, uh, the Periyar Mani Mani University, as well as my responsible and the challenging industrial partners. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll uh, break for lunch. Thank you, sir. Email log out, please.